Good evening and welcome to the Select Board Board of Health um, meeting on January 29, 2020. Uh, we'll start a little bit late, maybe 5.05. Um, so we have a couple, a lot of things going on tonight. We have a special town meeting at 7 p.m. Uh, we're gonna first start off with a um, complete streets prioritization plan, public review. We've got some regular business to do, kind of sprinkled in between the special town meeting and this. Um, but we could just, uh, we could just start off with um, welcoming um, David Loring uh, from Time Bond is here tonight. I'd like to come up, or if you could, um, you're welcome to stand wherever you want and point wherever you want. We can help you with the projector if you need to. But um, uh, this meeting is going to be uh, recorded and it's live on TV. So if you want to say anything, come up to a mic and state your name and where you live and um, speak clearly so everyone at home can, can hear. Um, so we're really excited. This process we've been working on for, for a super long time and feels like years, probably has been years, but, um, but uh, Time Bond's been great uh, working with Diana and, and, a, and a bunch of us to try and move some of our projects forward to see where we can, um, where we can apply some of the Complete Streets grant money first and uh, with unique challenges in town that kind of hamper us a little bit here and there. But, um, so I'll just welcome you and then if, you could start, and if you want to have us fill in or whatever, you can do that too. So. Oh, good evening. I don't really have a formal presentation. This was intended to kind of yeah. to present the results of, of where you are in the program and what yep. the next steps are, if you will. That's great. Um, back uh, 2018, May of 2018, uh, just highlighting where you are, the town submitted a letter of intent um, to enter into the Complete Streets program. Yes. They developed a complete streets policy that was submitted to Mass DOT in May of 2019. Mass DOT accepted the policy in June of 2019. So then, in later in the month of June, uh, Time Bond was brought on board under a contract with the town to develop what's called the Tier Two, which is a prioritization plan. That plan is really a listing of the town's priority projects under the complete streets program. For those of you that don't know what Complete Streets is, it's a program that the state initiated several years ago to uh, first develop policies within the communities to support a Complete Streets initiative for your transportation facilities. The idea being that our roadways service more than just motor vehicles. They're intended to provide equal transportation opportunities for not only motor vehicles, but <coughs> pedestrians, bicyclists, transit and any other mode of transportation that may come along so the idea was to envelope all of these users under a policy so that going forward when roadway improvements or new projects are considered that the municipalities take all the users into account and try to make improvements for those users so under that envelope if you will um, the policy was developed the second phase was to look at all your roadways in town we did a lot of communication with not only town boards, but other agencies and other consultants to try to develop kind of a master plan, if you will, identifying priority projects. That resulted in a list of about 20 different projects. Those projects were compiled into a table, which indicates the project descriptions, what they were supposed to entail. A lot of them included resurfacing of sidewalks, providing ADA compliance, um, bike passage, uh, safety improvements such as signage, flashing beacons, things of that nature to facilitate pedestrian movement. It also included um, a summary of the type of improvements that were associated with each one of the projects, the project location, of course, then a uh, total cost estimate for each project. Then the final piece that we just wrapped up uh, recently was the construction duration for each one of the projects and an anticipated start date for those projects. That compiles your prioritization plan. That was presented to the town um, on the uh, projector to my right is just a graphic illustration of where those projects are located. Um, for those of you that's, I said, 20 different projects, they total about $3.3 million of improvements. Um, and they are intended to be funded with uh, Complete Streets funding. That is a rolling program with application dates two times a year. The, just as far as schedule goes, mm -hmm. the 
construction applications are due May 1st and October 1st of the year, calendar year. NASDAQ usually takes about two and a half months to review those. You are eligible for up to $400,000 per application. It does not cover uh, design type of services, but rather it covers all aspects of the construction. It functions very similar to the Chapter 90 program that I'm sure you're familiar with through your highway department. Right. Uh, so, uh, see, four Some of the limitations on that are th they're not allowed to spend money on state roads. Correct. And so, you know, Sugarloaf Street and uh, Park Street, Conway Street, kind of a big section of our town and the, and the Sugarloaf Street that goes right up to the four-way stop is also State owned, so we, we only have a small section that we can do kind of downtown with that. But but there are you know there's Elm Street and our sidewalks and stuff uh, in front of Cheslicks and stuff. In developing the prioritization plan, you, uh, the slide I've got up here now, uh, the first series of projects, half dozen or so, were really focused around the town common, and yep. it was intended to make the improvements there to try to reconfigure that. So. That's where those first round of projects occur. Mm -hmm. And then as, as those projects are completed, the, the plan starts to move outwards and address other portions of the community where improvements are needed. Mm -hmm. so. so I don't know if the um the if I it over to you, I can point yeah. through the projects if you'd like. Sure, why don't we, uh, that'd be great. I just talk about each one. And So the first one that was identified and listed in the in the program was the town common, mm -hmm. and part of that the town common project was to update crosswalks, uh, curb ramps, some pedestrian scale lighting, the bike rack and a bike shelter, and reconfigure the sidewalks to maximize access in and around the common. As many of you are familiar with, it, it's difficult to navigate and there's a lot of conflict points with traffic in that mm -hmm. particular area. As you alluded, um, there is a state-owned right-of-way in that area which has kind of complicated that and slowed down the town's efforts to really see your vision through there. Right. Uh, second we, we still, yeah. uh, just to interrupt, we still um, have the ability though to tackle kind of what we can, right? We could still do um, North Main Street in that one section in front of the stores and then an access over to the common I'm hoping it's my goal for, for trying to get get something going there and then move up Elm or some other projects you have here too correct you can, you can still work because there are portions of that that are not state highway layout yeah. that you can do your work and then even if you're connecting to the state highway layout they would have probably an access permit to enter into their right of way to kind of complete whatever type of improvement such as a crosswalk right you're looking to do and we have been meeting with just so the public knows we um, the town has been meeting with DOT district 2 in Hatfield who, who governs all of this about um, getting access to those roads and you know it, it was many years ago it was the only road through so that's why it stayed owned and um, we don't want to just take over ownership without them upgrading all the um, infrastructure underneath the ground you know all, all their anything that they own, so we want it brought up to speed before we take it over. So those talks are ongoing, but those are long-term talks, and we're, we're anxious to get some, something started early. So. so that was you know, your initial project with the goal of the Tier 2 being approved. Um, the submission date for that Tier 2 would be uh, April 1st, and typically three to four weeks for a mass out approval of that. So if, if you stay in your timeline, you would get approval of your Tier 2 with the ability to submit an application, in theory, get that approved and roll into construction possibly later this year okay. um, for that first project, if that's the town's wish to do so. Yeah. Um, other projects as you step down the priority list um, were to begin addressing Park Street, which was some street and intersection reconfiguration to improve safety and do something with a one-way movement at that location. Um, and address some of the ADA compliance issues. Mm -hmm. The next two were related to Elm Street, which were creating crosswalks and curb ramps, detectable warning panels, which are the, the detectable panels at the bottom of an ADA ramp, 
and then uh, install some RRFBs. Those are rectangular rapid flashing beacons. And for those of you that haven't seen them, um, they're becoming more commonly used, but they are a push button light that lights up and flashes rapidly at crosswalk locations to increase visibility in those areas where pedestrians are crossing and really lead to greater awareness for motorists approaching that crosswalk. Right. Yeah. Then, I don't know if you want me to keep going through sure. all of these, um, yeah, just but I'll few. kind of highlight them yep. rather than the, the detail. But then it was moving over to Elm, Sugarloaf, South Main, and North Street intersection. Again, more upgrading of the crosswalks, installing curb ramps, the panels for ADA compliance, uh, pedestrian scale lighting, and try to address the uh, driveway at the vacant gas station at that location, mm -hmm. and then do a little bit with the on-street parking and uh, truck turning movements, which are usually related to curb returns, getting in and out of access to, to properties, abutting the uh, right of way. Uh, project number six was moving over to South Main Street. Very similar type of work with the crosswalks, curb ramps, panels, adding some bike lanes, uh, pedestrian mm -hmm. scale lighting, and then installing a sidewalk on the east side with curb installed on both sides of the street, more for traffic control, drainage, and motor safety control there. Yeah. Can you slide the... Oh, sure. Please, thank you. Oh, no, you have to use the yep. thing on the back. I don't think it's easy. Can you help? Oh, there it goes. This is all, it's all on our, if anyone has access to our website through their phone app, it's all on our website too. Thank you. Yep. The top line is six, which I just covered with a South Main Street. Yep. Thayer Street, which was installing curb ramps, sidewalk, and share bike lanes. That's a um, shared travel lane with the bike usage, and there's symbols that are actually pavement markings included on the roadway, which indicate to motorists that this is a shared uh, travel lane for both bicycles and motorists. Again, greater awareness in indicating that there's that shared use in place. Um, project number eight was North Main Street, uh, crosswalks, curb ramps, detectable panels, more of the RRFBs, curbs, bike lanes, transit route wayfinding, so that's additional signage for the transit route through there to aid people in getting to transit stops, a bus shelter, school zone signage with reduced speed limits to slow traffic and greater awareness of the school zone. Mm -hmm. And I think, I'll pause there, one of the emphasis with this program was coordination with other funding sources and programs that the town may be looking to do. The program is good in that it allows you to leverage other funding sources to try to accomplish more with the Complete Streets funding. Now, some of those could be safe routes to school, mm -hmm. and I think I did see that mentioned. Yep. Another is Green Dot, trying to implement green strategies uh, for drainage and things of that nature within this program so that you can get more accomplished with your, your money on, on given roadways. Okay. North Main Street 2 is continuing similar type of work as, as the first phase of that project with crosswalks, curb ramps, technical warning panels, and curbing, <coughs> as well as the uh, speed zoning through the school zone. Uh, North Main Street, three, four, again, continuing that same theme with crosswalks, curb ramps, detectable warning panels, pedestrian warning signage, and pedestrian scale lighting. So I was carrying all the way up to project number 11. Yep. Then 12 and 13 are over to Pleasant Street, with crosswalks, curb ramps, detectable warning panels, a sidewalk along the Frontier Regional School frontage, mm -hmm. then a landscape strip or barrier at the curve uh, just west of the school, RRFBs and pedestrian scale lighting, similar for project number 13. Okay. Project number starting at 14 was Conway Street and North Street. Uh, we were looking to reconfigure the intersection with Greenfield Road to restrict tra traffic, install a sidewalk on the south side of Conway Street, west side of North Street, 
again, the crosswalks and curb ramps at the intersection and some wayfinding signage to redirect the truck traffic at that location. Mm. This ends, right? This plus key comes over. That doesn't continue, correct? Right. So that Conway Street 5 and 10 intersection, are you looking and working with the uh, DOT to either make that just a right-hand turn only or something like yeah, that's a, that effect? That's a really I don't think they'll let us put another traffic light in there, but... A lot of cur cars get put over on the roof there quite often. Um, that will require coordination with DOT. Yeah, my yeah. preference would be to put the culvert in the North Street and just close off that road there. But yeah. we're yeah, we're that getting down into the down program into, and yeah, a lot of work, work to do on that area so, for sure. Right. So some of the details. But it's a hazard because you've got cars right. taking a left hand turn there crossing three lanes of traffic. I should also mention not only was this town, but there were a number of studies that were done including some of the town policies that were implemented first as well as the roadway safety audits which I'm sure would have picked up on the accident rates at some yep. of those locations yeah. to try to prioritize what the work gets done and how it gets done. Yeah. And there is... This is that 10,000 foot yep. review of projects, if you will. Right. Then as you get into the design, there'll be permitting, engineering design, um, and development of bid documents for each one of these projects. Right. Further discussion with, with the local agencies as well. Sure. Yeah, a lot of work to do on that one for sure. Uh, number 15 was the old Main Street. This is the crosswalk, the curb ramps, and again, the uh, flashing beacons. Uh, 16 is Albany Road. A little different treatment there with installation of bump outs with the raised crosswalks and RRFBs. Uh, bump outs are a feature where the curb line is extended into the roadway. What it does is it reduces the pedestrian crossing distance, allows the pedestrians to be more visible, as well as the crossing distance for them is shorter so they can cross quicker with a greater visibility. Uh, 17, 18, 19 are all on Old Main Street with more of the bump outs, crosswalks, mm -hmm. rapid flashing beacons, curb ramps. We just had some raised crosswalks, you know, put in there to slow down the traffic a little bit, but they're still hard to see if you're okay. night and it's raining or whatever. There are additional treatments that can be done with those, some more successful than others with lighting in the locks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you realize it when, you, when you're going too fast, for sure. <laughs> then uh, the last project was on Elm Street with uh, crosswalks, curb ramps, and detectable warning panes um, and a sidewalk on the north side of the street. So working with the town, as I mentioned, these are the 20 priority projects that were developed. Approximately $3.3 .3 million in construction work, largely funded through the Complete Streets Program. Mm -hmm. So, and they will take, um, so you, you have an ability to apply for 400000 each. project can, can get access to that money, right? I mean, it's, it's quite a long time, and it depends on who's still in the governor's seat at the time you're doing this stuff and if the program's still working, but um, we can tackle each one or two or three of these, kind of group them and, and go along. It's not just like one shot at 400000 and that's all you get for the town? Correct. Okay, good. Yep. I didn't, I didn't rattle the, the individual project cost estimates, but as you mentioned, right. you can bundle a couple of them together to try to get you know, up to that 400000 Many of these projects are less than that, so you yeah. can combine a couple together and do that. Yet yeah, you're eligible to submit two times a year. Yep. Um, they, yep. And the success is, as you can imagine, is dependent on how many other applications and what type of competition from other towns. I'm sure everyone has seen the recent article. They, I think it was 8.4 million, and they awarded to 37 projects. So there's yep. 370,000 to each community that, mm -hmm. that applied Good. in this latest round. It's a very popular project. It is in current bond bill to be renewed. Yeah. Um, and I expect that the project, the uh, programs that MassDOT is working with, this is very likely to be renewed and continued. Right. Do you know how much um, is in engineering for each one of these? Do you have the engineering included in that or broken out at all? Or I know um, I looked at the complete streets funding and there was like total estimated cost, complete streets, and it must be like other source, so would be the town, town's money. But I wondered how much of that was 
Is that just construction or is that engineering as well? Or what else are we looking at for costs? This is primarily looking at the construction costs. Right. Um, because it was looking to provide that funding information to MassDOT. Yep. Um, for their total as they build out the program. Yep. So putting me on the spot. Of course. <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot. I just wonder, was it in there? Is it not in there? It what are the not. averages um, that you yeah, typically average? Do? If you're looking at engineering and administration of the projects, you're probably 10 to 15 yeah. percent. Just okay. for your purposes and budgeting. Yep, that's all. Yep, and I know that you know each project is obviously a lot more complicated than than just a sidewalk or something like that. So the engineering might yeah, be a little larger. Yeah, if I want to give you a number, it'd be somewhere in that range, and then that's recognize fine. sometimes you have environmental permitting. There could be other factors, of coordination with MassDOT that you have to consider. Right. right, but you you would be safe in, in that environment. Good. Thank you. Um, does the board have any questions? Um, I had just expressed that I really want to make sure that we're coordinating with the MVP program and um, any other sources of money we might be able to hustle up. Um, so I guess, you know, we'll make sure that we forward all the information to you so you can keep us current on this. Um, Are you able to mix? funding sources so sometimes you can't do state and state but you could do federal and state or there's you can mix different funding sources to try to leverage these that's good. you know your MVP program where you're getting funding to to make those improvements or implement that project if you're looking to do an adjacent complete streets project yeah. you can lump them together into one contract okay you will have to track the funding and payment for reimbursement purposes separately right so just yep advice is structure your contract so that your construction work can be appropriately, you know, divided right. between the funding programs, but it's, it's done all the time. Okay. Well, we've been working with Zach on our MVP program, so I just, you know, I'll just make sure that he's coordinating with you on that. Um, that was my only comment. Any, uh, Anything from the public? So, anybody? Yes, John. Um, Come I'm on. Oh, John. So, John. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, just to make sure everyone. I was hoping I could get away with. It. No, no. <laughs> you gotta get up. <laughs> Thank you for coming up. John Pereski. Um, I'm surprised that the projects cost less than four hundred thousand. That's great, but are there any that are more than four hundred thousand? Um, there was the North Main Street upgrade of sidewalks, and um, the other North Main Street crosswalks. Up by Pelican. So how? So, so what we, we so what we would do? I mean, this would be my inclination: um, is bundle as many projects together to close to the 400 to put them through. So if we have 128 and 165, then I um, you would do those two at least, and maybe pop in the 21,000 or something. I don't know. We would we would try to get close to 400 every time. And then the ones that are over, we'd either just eat that, or if we can break away some of it, you know. We can would. you use two 400,000 allotments for the same project? I don't think so, right? Because you've got to spend it in a certain time frame. Go, go, maybe you might know a little better than me. What, it's not that the projects don't cost more than 400,000. The way the prioritization plan was developed, for the most part, many of the projects were broken into different smaller projects to fit within the $400,000 grant funding program. Because if you, if you look at, well, it's, it's right. not up on the screen now, but the common was broken up into three or four different projects. Right, okay, right. Each one, you know, if you, if you right. added them up, are, are millions. But because of the way we're trying to fit this within the program in each funding round, um, that's, that's why the project costs are less. Okay, and got it. And to your point, you cannot bundle different applications together to try to do an $800,000. It's not like chapter 90 where you could save up one year, not spend, and then get chapter 90 the second year, and then finally get enough to do a road. You no, know, this is a project individually. This is a program where they want to see you spend the money. Yeah. When they award it, they would like to see you spend it in that cycle. Yeah. That's what's the problem with the MVP program. We have such a sh short window. I mean, this is why we're having the special town meeting tonight. Is you have, you know, they want you to sign the contract immediately and get going, and you have to spend it by June 30th. But, hey. They're giving us money, we're going to do it, you know, that kind of thing. Well, we can combine, say, on our sidewalks, if we're using some Chapter 90 money on our sidewalks, we can combine them with these grants, right? Yes. 
Yeah. So if, if you want to extend a project, as as Selectman uh, Turner was mentioning, if you want to go beyond that 400, you could supplement it with Chapter 90 or another funding source. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one more question: sure. um, the old Main Street projects. Mm -hmm. Wondering what it's going to do to the character of Old Main Street. True. Yep. Just Absolutely. Yeah. I know. We get complaints. I know. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. yep. Thank you. Anybody else have any? Yeah, come on. Come on. Welcome. Hi. Hi, Woody. Yes, you do. Um, Welcome. I'm happy to see the town is you know, addressing some of these infrastructure improvements and facing certain shortcomings, I guess, that are developing and presenting themselves around town. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of them do really mesh with the DOT-oriented streets. And it would seem, as much as you want to do some projects, that it would seem like you need to get the coordination so it's not just stuff that gets either redone later Correct. or wasted or just a yep. short-sighted plan rather than something that's broader and really does have a more comprehensive effect for improving the town uh, roadways. And, no doubt. Yep. Um, I know it's a problem, but every time I've just kind of tried to ask about issues with Sugarloaf Street and stuff, I get always like, oh, that's the state, so we can't do anything about it. Right rather than, oh, well, we could petition the state to do something about it. And yeah. I know it's probably a real nuisance, and oh, no, it's, it might it's, take, you know, three years before they respond. For, uh, but Actually, but, we've been negotiating yeah, with been them. meeting with them, uh, right. going down there and, and bringing this issue up. Because you're right, you'd, I, I, I don't want to start, you know, putting something in and have to rip it up in two years because you're going to do this. Um, you know, with the, with the common actual, just walkways on the common, I, you know, before I was, my whole goal was to get that stuff going on the common itself, the immediate common, but I didn't want to do anything until we got all of it figured out around it. And it's been three or four years, and I, I'm still five years out before we're ever going to have our hands on any of that. So I, I want to move forward on a little stuff, but making sure we don't do more than we really know that we're not, you know, not going to mess up with something else. Yeah, because you're working future. around the edges of those bigger problems, but as long as there's a clear. Uh, like a comprehensive plan that everyone's kind of aware of. Yes, an overview good. plan first. Yeah. That's basically what I was getting at. And um, yeah, I've recently experienced the um, the uh, raised crosswalks in, in, at Old Main Street. It'd be nice if they were highlighted with some yellow paint uh -huh. on the raised edge just yeah. to show that it's, it's not normal. But I do think they're great that they're there and that should be used in many other locations in town yeah. to help with traffic calming and making it a nicer community to actually live in rather than just drive through as fast as possible. True, yeah. And um, that's, I think, what we're dealing with a lot here is a lot of flow through traffic yeah. in town that didn't exist before, but that's, I think, one of our new uh, town traffic issues is the, the zipping through. The flow to the bridge, yes. which is only going to increase. Yeah. And, um, yeah. If some we, of these things could help address that in a sort of a forward-looking way, that yeah. would be a great way to use the money. Yeah. Because um, uh, those are, I think, current issues in town. It's not just like simply painting some lines somewhere. It's, there's some things that could be done a little more uh, boldly to yes. affect traffic. Yep, I agree with that. Yeah, okay, well, well, let's just want yeah. to Thank mention you. that. Sure yeah. that. Yeah, no, we're, we really are working on it. It's yeah. just, uh, they're, they, I, I, my understanding is that they've had, we have a sort of an agreement in the sense that they're going to upgrade everything and they're going to put, you know, all the underground um, infrastructure and they're going to put the money in, or the money is going to be in the bill, this new bond bill. And we're talking and, about Sugarloaf Street? Yes. Like actually replacing and, and the, like the sewer pipes and all that? Well, well that sewers are ours. Okay, yeah. that, but yeah, other, other but yeah, drainage kind of things and catch basins, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, whatever's in that. We, we, you know, and it takes, they, it wasn't on their radar, so they had some money kind of figured in for doing like. Um, well, they had side, we've been complaining and, about sidewalks yeah, for years. Yeah, so they've got a little bit of so stuff. So they had for, sidewalk money. Mm -hmm. Sidewalk, but they don't have, um, they haven't 
kind of a bunch of money. So it really, it's a cycle thing where they need to then apply for it, and then once that's done, then we can kind of get it over. But they're, I think they're open to us accepting it, and they're open to doing the, that infrastructure work. It's just gonna take a little while to get them get yeah. the funding and the planning and, and all. And they, and they were open, and they were very sympathetic, I mm -hmm. think, to the fact that we were concerned about you know, just being a through fair, safety. You know, racing through. Yeah. Well, I knew that. Uh, I guess, uh, according to the the old timers in town, there used to be a traffic light in the yes. center of town that, that was forward. removed, and now it seems like maybe it's time to put it back. I mean, yeah. people just they they like to avoid traffic lights, mm -hmm. so it's it's a very clear deterrent to just flow through traffic if you put one in. That's probably why people aren't using the. 116 bypass because it's got too many traffic lights now and but the center of Deerfield doesn't right there you go it's, it's so uh, whatever the, the, yeah. the flow of least resistance to alleviate the traffic in the center of town <laughs> <laughs> yep anyway it yeah. seems like you know it's good to see that these are now being addressed and hopefully we can yeah get some progress within the next 10 or 20 years and I appreciate the input. I mean, that's what it takes. It takes people to kind of, you know, give yeah. us their thoughts. Yes, it takes everyone coming out so that we can get credit for the meeting. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and give us your ideas so we can, you know, put all that in, in place and move, move the town forward. Just back in the day, Sugarloaf Street used to be a four-lane highway. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, yeah, and I mean, it was, no it was the main the drag. At all. It's yeah. still, oh, there's still no parking allowed, but yeah. they don't enforce it. Yeah. Which they could because State right. If we we went down, you know, oh. saying that we were gonna, you know, we wanted to do this and that, and they said, "Wow, there's yeah. no parking." Right, mm -hmm. and, that's, and that that goes with our common. So, you know, I know people will be upset eventually if there's no parking around the common. That's why we our plan is to upgrade the Leary lot, make sure there is parking, and make parking better on Elm. Maybe some other areas to just, you know. So that people do have certainly access to the. We want people to park their car, go to dinner, shop, you know, walk around, and uh, yeah, actually have an active downtown. Absolutely. Oh, and not so safe. worried about the cars and that they buy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If I people mean, feel that it's walkable, and that they feel safe, and they will, they'll well, bring, use it that. brings places to life that way. It it's does. because the, the whatever the the highway kind of. Uh, flow through highway feeling is not conducive to having a, a pedestrian experience. True. Absolutely. All right. Good. Well, that's well, thanks again. today's comp. Thanks coming in. Appreciate it. <laughs> Happy talking you made. Any other comments tonight on this subject? Kevin? <laughs> Jump in. I just wanted to come up last. That way I could yeah. fill in anything that may be. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Scarborough, uh, Public Works Superintendent. Um, this is a great program. Um, the only thing we've got a few things we need to be cautious of is we need to look at the specs when it comes to the diagrams or the bicycles that get sprayed into the road. Mm -hmm. um, I know Sunderland pulled the um, this type of program, yep. and that is now why they have the four foot by six foot ones that they've got going down Route 47 now. Uh, have you been, have anybody seen those? I think I've seen yeah. them. How they're huge, how huge they are? Yeah. That is part of the the um, the bid. Okay. So we need to make sure that we look at all of the specs. Right, to make how sure big that those are gonna be. You know, because I mean, you want it decent size, mm -hmm. but obviously it's it's the size of a Volkswagen, which is, <laughs> and I asked, cause I asked George about it, yep. the superintendent over there, and he said, you know, I wanted them smaller, and he goes, but I was told this is what they are, and this is what I'm gonna do because yep. it's part of the program. Right. Um, that one small section that was going from uh, North Street out, or excuse me, uh, Conway Street out to <coughs> Greenfield Road or five or one, yeah, five and 10, yep. um, that right there is still technically state. Yep. So that we'd have to make sure that we get the proper permitting from that. But that would tie in perfectly with the program that they present gonna be happening up here fairly shortly because they're putting yes. in sidewalks from Elm Street to the fire station right. on the east side. Yep. And then on the west side, they're going from Elm Circle or Elm Street down to the Circle K. Okay. So all of these right here will tie in very nicely with what is, is coming mm -hmm. up in here. Yep. Because obviously we are looking at, we're not going to try and do, you know me, I, I only yep. want to do it once. I don't Absolutely. want to do it twice. Yep. So obviously we're looking into that. 
Um, there shouldn't be a problem. Again, you know, I've been in the same meetings you have as far as DOT is concerned down in uh, District 2 for the, the common area. Yes. You know, that's, we're still in negotiations mm -hmm. on what's going on with that. Yep. Um, I would like to just go ahead and throw this real quick public announcement out for the sidewalks in town, mm -hmm. going from the center of town down. Yeah, they are state. And if we were to go ahead and replace those at, and, and I know the price would be a little bit different, but that one small section that we put in over there by Cumberland Farms, mm -hmm. $20,000. Right. 115 feet. Take Sugarloaf Street, it's 1.4 something million dollars. Right. Where does that money come from? You know, I know people keep saying, well, you can go ahead and do it. I'll do it. You fund it and I'll do it. Right. But I need $1.4 million yeah, to do Sugarloaf need, Street sidewalks. We need to piecemeal and, a bit. And we are yeah. speaking with District 2 right now because, I mean, I'm almost going out every other day right now trying to patch Sugarloaf Street. And the issue I have is it's delaminating, it's not an actual pothole. Right. So that is the problem, is it the last time they did the overlay? It's that piece of overlay that's coming out. It's not an actual pothole where it's broken down through. So you can't really fill it. So we, yeah. we do the best we can and it's there for two or three days and it blows out again. It doesn't make a difference whether I use cold patch, good cold patch, or hot patch. Right. Um, and again, you know, I've been, been talking with, with District 2 saying, we gotta get on the tip. Yeah. The tip program that we're, we're going to be seeing probably this summer or into next summer is going to be, they're going to be taking care of the ADA compliant mm -hmm. crosswalks at Thayer Street, Eastern Ave, Mountain, Mountain West. West, and I think one more, because I know it doesn't go down all the way. Okay. Um, so those are the ones that, that is part of the tip program that is presently right now. Yep. There is no tip. We're not on the tip, which is historically about five years out. Right. We're not even on the tip right now for anything on Sugarloaf Street. Right. So, so do you think we should yeah, go down? Well aware. I mean, you were at the meeting, Kevin. Right. You thought it was a good meeting. Oh, it was a fantastic meeting. Yeah. So we do you think another. we should, do, should we have a follow-up meeting pretty soon? Yeah. You know, it, it can't hurt, but, you know, realistically, you know, if, if, if you want to put pressure on, the best pressure to put on is to go ahead and call your legislator. Get in touch with them. Yeah, we have been. If, if, have if, been if I'm I mean, collectively, oh, townspeople, yes. pick people. up the phone, start yes. making your phone calls. Squeaky true. wheel gets the gets the grease. It's true. So if you get enough people to go ahead and put a push to them, very similar to that crosswalk that was put in across from yep. the the, um, the post office. Yep. That was a political push to put that in. Right. So what's saying you can't have a political push to go ahead and take care of our sidewalks because we have elderly that are falling down on. It. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not proper, it's not ADA. You're right. in the state of Massachusetts, come on, pony up. You know? Yeah. So if, if people are really serious, get in touch with your legislator and, and say, I have a problem in this area, and I need help. And also advocate for the bond bill that's out there right now. That was exactly. one of the messages that we got from DOT was like, look, we wanna get this done. The bond bill is kind of stuck in the House and the right. Senate right now, and we're waiting, you know, the governor wants to get this going. Um, so, you know, when you talk about the needs that we have, also advocate for that. You know the bills that are, are there that would get funding to DOT, so we could start you know pressuring them for some help. Exactly. You know, yeah. and the only other thing is obviously going to Old Deerfield with flashing lights. That's yep. We'll we'll, 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 we'll cross, cross that, that bridge, bridge when we get later to it. on. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Great. Um, so next steps are, are what typically a town would do would be to kind of start figuring out where we want to move forward. I know you know my personal preference, but I don't know how we go forward from here as far as the, um, you know, looking at a crosswalk. On, I'm, I'm, aside from this, I'm looking for funding at, at annual town meeting to do some funding for, the, again, the common and putting new benches on the common and better pathways because they're really narrow, they're really bumpy, um, they're it's just dangerous. So we want to kind of lay out a new pathway so that when you cross from Leo's table, onto the common you have a landing and a pathway from there because right now uh, the crosswalk goes to nowhere so if we could kind of get that around the around the, the uh, fountain and and we know eventually if we take over park street or something happens uh, and that crosswalk changes over to the dentist's office you know maybe we'll have to rework those pavers at some point um, in a new pathway but um, i don't want to wait 10 years to get just some, some safe walkways that we have right now. We may end up moving them in the future or taking over Park Street, God forbid, closing Park Street and expanding our common. You know, there's all kinds of ideas down the road, but um, 
the main thing to do is to, is to get kind of our walkway in front of uh, on North Main Street in front of the stores and Leo's table and Cheslick's and then if we can wrap around Elm, Elm there a bit because it's like a, it's a double curb down to you saw that too double curb uh, down there so some maybe a ramp or some, something there um, and then you know so that that kind of area that crosswalk and and maybe we do need a larger design for the whole thing down the road knowing that some things might change on that you know the Park Street end but so uh, do you need us to vote to put ask you to get the application in well the next step is to submit the tier yeah. two plan yeah the next step, <laughs> right I mean, this meeting was, was good you get your further public feedback kind of finalize yeah. the the plan as presented to the community the next step is the community actually submits this which is an upload i'll give you the actual excel file which right. you will then upload into the mass dot portal locally right. mass dot right. then as i said it's two and a half three and a half weeks for them to review Occasionally, they will come back and maybe sure. want a clarification on a project or something to move. But yep. that kicks that process forward. The next immediately following that is submitting your application for Ooh, that round one. April. Yes, with yep. the time frame that I gave you. Yep. With that first project or first two, if you will. Sure. To start on those projects that we just taught you just mentioned mm -hmm. uh, on the north side of the common there. So yep. That's really your next steps. Great. <clears throat> the one thing I would caution, perhaps, or think about, and maybe it's further discussion, is in thinking in terms of the common, having a master plan in place. Yes. It's not necessarily all the details of where you want to put a bike rack or a bench, right. but rather how you're going to facilitate access through that area and what the bigger vision is so that when you put the projects together, they're all working towards well, that. Well, that's the key, and that's really, you know, we've been meeting as an ad hoc town common committee for three years. And, you know, we have a, you know, we had Conway School of Design kind of come up with some plans, and there's a plan from the 80s or 90s that the yeah, 90s. Sugarloaf Business District put together, which is beautiful, tying in, you know, um, you know the, the Leary Lot and some other areas. Um, so there's ideas out there, but we need some kind of engineering help to go, okay this is what you're going to do here because you don't know this is going to stay but we can do this for now and i think that kind of back and forth in a meeting you know with several us together yeah. that would be very grateful for us and that way there is a master plan and 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 the public can kind of get around that or give some pointers on that or we like this we don't like that and then we can kind of go from there but that's going to happen fairly quick if we're going to do yes. some uh some stuff in the april for for that end so um happy to get get rolling on that whenever you guys are ready so, so you know that we want to move forward then. yeah yes okay yeah so i will shoot you yeah. the excel file that'd be great okay or, or sooner and then uh, that can be uploaded and start the that tier two <clears throat> approval process any other questions from anybody else well thank you so much i really appreciate you. you um helping us helping on this and get this forward so great So we're um, 10 minutes to six, so we'll do a little bit of our business, and then um, we meeting is at the library are coming after seven, though, correct. right? Yes, okay. seven is so, after the special, correct? Yep. So maybe okay. we can start with the new business. Yeah, and I think, um, and well, we have executive session on here, because I do want to step you. away for that before the meeting as well. Um, okay. What do you want to do? You want to jump down to? Do you want to go over these things and then go to the yeah, executive sure. session? I do, but I'm. Uh, yep. I um, let me just look at this real quick. So, do you want to? Um, do you want to? I'd love to just talk a little bit about our four, four town. Sure. Uh, our four town meeting. So we had a, um, we had a nice uh, select board meeting uh, with. Uh, Sunderland hosted a meeting the other night, Monday night. Monday, Monday night. night. Yeah, it Monday. goes by quick. Uh, Monday night for the um, Sunderland hosted a meeting for all four towns: Conway, Waitley, Sunderland, and Deerfield Select Board um, to have a listening session with Senator Joe Comfort and Rep. Natalie Blay. Um, so we met in Sunderland and spent an hour or so talking, hearing their kind of their legislative um, update on what they've been working on and where they're 
uh, where they are, and um, we kind of had then we had a general discussion about you know issues that we're working on here. Um, I think the big takeaways uh, from there were they were very proud and happy about the Student um, Opportunity Act, Act. Uh, yeah. that came out, which is um, about 1.5 billion in funding uh, for education. Of course, it always has to get appropriated, and it um, it is um, it's helpful, but not really for rural schools. Um, you know, rural areas. Uh, there are some aspects of the bill that are going to be helpful as far as um, some some uh, transportation and uh, special ed transportation. Um, a couple other items. There'll be more uh, tra it's regional transportation reimbursement. Yes. On frontier level. It should be a hundred percent. It's never been a hundred percent, so there's a little bump there, and there is some money for charter school reimbursement, um, but. Um, it, it's, it's a great bill for urban schools. <clears throat> it has not really touched Western Mass at all in any rural schools. So we are still, like next year, um, our, our town will be getting about $100,000 less in chapter, uh, in uh, school choice funding, and that's just because we have a large group of sixth graders that have moved on, and, and you know, we've always been looking at um, school choice as, as a fill-in, and at some point it got kind of a little bit larger and we were funding a lot more school choice than we really needed to so kids were coming in we're teachers and multiple classrooms and we really if we looked at it we could have pared back a little bit which we did one year and that's called the ripple effect through the elementary school where teachers are moving around because that two classes instead of three kind of works its way through the through the years um, it's been a little hard for the staff and everybody to deal with but um, we, we need to focus and make sure we're not educating you know, cost about fourteen to fourteen thousand or more to educate a child in 17. our school, seventeen. Um, and when you get a school choice child come in, it's about five thousand bucks. So we got to make sure that we're we're adding, you know, the teachers there, the infrastructure's there. We're not adding um, a bunch of work um, and only getting five thousand for it. So, um, so we have some struggles that are are coming up and um, with funding, as as always with the schools. So we talked a lot about that and. Um, and that there is a there is some work that they're trying to do to get um, a, a, actually a, a cabinet position for rural policy, um, and that would that would help us a lot. We're advocating for that. I've got a letter to talk about tonight, a little bit about that. Um, but we really need somebody fighting for Western Mass. We don't have the numbers, and we don't have the money. I mean, all the money and numbers are in the eastern part of the state, inside 495, maybe just outside a little bit. Um, so it's very difficult when, when you're asking for stuff, you just don't have the, the numbers to get what you need done and get the money out here to the West. Um, so we talked about education, we talked about housing and transportation. Um, we're really advocating, you know, our seniors don't have any, any transportation. Um, they need, um, you know, get to a doctor's or just go out to a show or, you know, our regional senior center is Sundle and Waitley and Deerfield and we have no way to go pick up a senior and bring them to the center. Um, it's very expensive. We're looking at this year putting about $5,500 into that budget, which really it kills our budget over there. It's very, you know, that doesn't sound like a lot of money as you think of things, but when you have a very small budget for a senior center, um, it, it's tough to swallow that, that kind of an increase. Um, but we really need it. And that was just kind of figuring, could we get two trips for our seniors for the year? But it's really expensive because you need a driver with all the insurances and you need a, a van. And if you look out to any of the local, you know, uh, delivery services out there, they're, you know, it's very expensive. So there are other senior centers that have vans. So we're looking, how do we get that? Um, how do we get a van funded and a driver funded for our senior center? Um, or how do we use the regional trans transportation authorities like uh, Franklin County and Pioneer. The problem is Sunderland can ride Amherst and South all they want, but anybody that's from Sunderland can't jump on an RFT, you know. PVMA, uh, I mean PVTA. A PVTA bus can go that way, but they can't come, come in a F and FRTA and FRTA the other way. can't go the other it's way. It's ridiculous. It's, you know, it's these invisible, invisible barrier walls. So we were really stressing to Senator um, 
and rep that, that they work on this issue and work with those two transportation authorities to break that down and help us um, find a way to get our seniors to doctor's appointments. And as Carolyn pointed out, a lot of these specialists are moving to the uh, Springfield. So it's no longer you know a ride to Greenfield to see your specialist. It's a ride, or not even to Northampton, it's a ride to Springfield. Everything's down at Bay State now. And that's a long haul for a senior to go or you know expensive to, you know, to get a ride in a van all the way down there. So these are big issues that we're trying to work around. Uh, the other item was senior housing. Uh, Sunderland is working on getting some senior housing uh, uh, finally going in, in town. We talked a lot about sharing, you know, an idea that Tom Fyden Kevitz had was um, you get different towns like Conway, they ne will never have the numbers to put in a senior housing. And Lathrop communities or some, you know, Arbors or somebody's not going to build you know, a 40 bed unit in, um, in Conway. It just is, the, the numbers aren't there. So what do they do? What do we do? Uh, what do these other communities locally do? We have to really work together and find a solution for, um, for our seniors to have affordable housing that, that's local. We, we have some ideas coming up that we found in Boston. Uh, so we're gonna flush those out to see if they're usable. Um, but we need to kind of. I'm really excited. Actually. Yeah, we do have we do have a good a good line on something. But we'll we'll see in the next few weeks how that pans out and how we can work work together and combine different programs to get that to work. But senior housing is really important to us, and I know Carolyn's worked on it for many many years. And twenty one years. Our residents have waited twenty something years for something to happen, along with our senior center. Um, so those are issues that we're talking about, maybe sharing or helping each other with. Um, so that, that was part of the meeting. Anything else you want to add from that? Well, I, I you know, they had talked about some infrastructure. We, we stress infrastructure um, issues. There's no money, there has been no federal money for three years for any projects. And um, so the state is, set, you know, stepping up to, to allow us to do stuff through the MVP program. And, um, but they, they talked about adding more money um, through the bond bill for culvert replacement, which is huge. Um, the MVP program is not supposed to be just culvert replacement, but truthfully, um, you know, that's what needs to be done. So, um, and small bridges. So, um, and those are way oversubscribed. You know, you have $8 million that they put out and you have like $30 million worth of requests. So, um, they're well, really well aware of that. Uh, I, I was really excited in Boston I, th I feel like we're making some headway on this new school formula. As Trevor said, we're really, we're getting penalized. And so, um, you know, we sat down with the real worker, worker bees, and mm -hmm. tried to sort that out. So we're making some headway on that, finally. Um, be we, the formula had to come out, and it is, in fact, we're getting penalized. We're gonna get less money. And um, so I, I feel like we have some appeal ability I, I can't no one's promising anything but they were certainly listening to us took all our information and I felt like we spent really good quality time on that so that will make a big difference in money wise um, could we just I mean 70 we're up close to 70 percent of our budget is school related so um, that's huge um, I think the other thing that was really exciting was just uh, you know people were listening to us um, I, I don't know. I just felt like this year was more valuable. The conference was yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. I, it was more valuable for trying to sort out things. One of the things, um, there were some really great ideas on how to deal with OPEP, um, and that which I, I wouldn't have even have thought about. So um, yeah. that was exciting. We learned about that. And so we're going to try to implement those in the next couple of years. And um, so I feel like we're, compared to other communities, we're doing really well, mm -hmm. and I and I think that people, you know, we just we have so much that we have to get done that it gets overwhelming, and it seems like oh my God, all we're doing is spending money right and left, and we just. But uh, you know, compared to other pr communities, I, I did notice that when I was talking with other people, you know, that, and I think I posted this on on a Facebook page that it, it was really refreshing to talk with other communities and understand that at least you know we're. We're trying, we have an engaged public, they're interested in what's going on, they're pushing us forward on, on these things. And I found a lot of the um, seminars that I went to 
um, so a couple of them, you know, the, the recycling one is huge. It was a great article in the paper yesterday under my turn of opinion page about the recycling facility in West Springfield, at which we are a part of through the Franklin County Solid Waste District. Um, there was a gentleman presenting there who touches 50.1 million homes a day picking up recycling, uh, not him himself, but his, his companies. Um, they touch a huge, like 46 states in the country. Um, every day they're grabbing recycling and, and dealing with it. And there's been a massive shift in um, who's taking those recyclings and the market of those recyclings. Before we just kind of didn't really pay for that because we knew there was money there and um, they would get money on the other end. Well, that's not the case anymore. So this year you'll see in, the, in, the, in our annual budget that, that the recycling is, is a bigger hit. We're looking at maybe $28,000 top end for, for costs for recycling where we weren't paying that before. Um, and that was because of the quality of stuff that we're recycling. So we really need to look at washing out our, our stuff when we put it in there. It's the contaminants. And that's really why China said you're, the quality of recycling that, that we're getting from the United States isn't the quality that we need. So it has too many contaminants in it, too many other things, you know, a lot of food not washed out. There's just, it's almost trash. So to them, it's just not worth the taking it, having to deal with the labor and cleaning all of that. So we have to do a better job when we recycle about recycling only what really should be recycled um, and doing a better job of cleaning that stuff out. It was interesting to, to hear about glass um, because of the weight of that and the carbon footprint. If you're, you know, you really need a local supplier or a local um, recipient of your glass because the further you truck it, the more you're spending in carbon footprint to move it somewhere. And if it gets into the recycling stream, it, it you know, it breaks and it wreaks havoc on their machines. It's just like sandpaper going through their, their system. So um, you really need to clean the glass well, and, and we, we're looking at different ways of how you separate that out. A lot of communities are a one stream where cardboard and paper and everything goes in one bin. We're a two stream system, which is really great, um, but we should do a better job. And um, I posted something this today online about, uh, Kevin had sent me a link on um, information about you know what you can do to kind of make it more economical for your community when you recycle because it's still extremely important to uh, recycle you know some people might think oh well I'm not, we're not getting any money for it I'm just going to throw it away it costs more money to throw that away than it does to recycle it so please don't throw your recycling away please just think about what you're recycling wash it out you know separate it well and uh, we'll get through this and the market will change and we'll get a little bit better at, at, um, at dealing with that I went to um, updates on municipal law, so there was a lot of cases that have changed, and, and that was interesting. Um, just a really good, a really good meeting, so um, I always enjoy going. You can kind of get a shot in the arm whenever you get, get there every year and see what's going on and what we're doing, so. We got our awards. Yes, yeah, we went to each, each seminar we have to, which reduces uh, your cost for insurance for the town, so every, every year you have to go. And, um, we did three apiece, so yeah. we got maxed out. Yeah. We got um, our full 15% credit on our insurance. It's important. It saves us a yeah. lot of money. So we do that every year. So um, that's that's what I have for an update. Do you have anything you want to add? comments. Oh, please. Please. Right? Well, just because you're talking about funding, and yeah. I just want to start reminding people that this is federal census year. Thank and you. So it's, it's really, really important <clears throat> that we kind of get a census from everybody. Um, they're coming out mid-March. And so that's, those are the numbers that drive our federal funding. So, Absolutely. Um, we want to make sure that we get a lot of information out there for people to watch, fill out their census, everybody in the households, and try and get everybody counted. Great. That, and we'll mention that again when we, hopefully we have a full house. We need a little more of us um, at 7, so I'll mention that again. But Barbara was saying, uh, for those that couldn't hear on TV, we definitely need you to fill out your census. comes out every 10 years. This is the year. Everything is based on that. Whether you're a resident of this country or not, you need to be counted so that we make sure that we keep our congressional representation and we have the grants and fundings that come to, back to our, to our state and our community to, to fund the programs that we want to do. So really important that you, that you do that. You do the town census and you also do the, the regular census when it comes out um, soon. So um, <coughs> let's see. So um, 
you want to do new business first. So I want to hit that real quick. So we've got a little bit of time, and then I wanted to um, do our executive session before we get going. On the first item, the MVP contract. Wait on that. Oh, yes. Oh, the consultant contract? Yes, so I'll wait on those, yeah. Um, the dis uh, so we had uh, Kevin uh, Scarborough was going to do a disclosure and um, oh, yeah. Kevin, do you want, you want to help me on that a little bit again? That was that was had to do with a, we have a company that comes and pulls the, the really expensive machine that whirls all the air into our aerator in the uh, sewer system down on the plant or any plant. We have to pull that off and get all of the rags that people are still flushing down their toilet ripped off of that thing uh, once a month. Um, roughly. Or roughly once a month. So we have a crane Six system weeks. that comes and lifts that off, pulls it to the side. We have to manually cut all that junk off of that fan and then clean it up and get it back in or swap one way or the other. But we have a company that does that. Um, if I get this wrong, let me know. So we have a company that does that. We were, um, we were going through a kind of a, a middleman doing that work. and. Um, we found they, they it was kind of too small for them to bother with, so they said, Why don't you just call directly to the guy who's got the crane and maybe get a better price? So we did that. It turns out the man that does that might be your brother in law or he something is, my is your brother in law, Correct. So, um, so anytime um, something like that happens, uh, employees always want to bring that to our attention, and we want to tell people that you know, so that there isn't a conflict of interest. They always make a statement, and I think Kevin called down to the ethics in, uh, in Boston and said, what do I do? How do I deal with this? I want to disclose this to everybody, that, that this gentleman who's giving us a good deal on this isn't getting a monetary <laughs> kickback. There's no, you know, no, no favoritism going on, but, um, you know, we could go out to bid, but it's a fairly small amount of money and uh, seems to be working pretty well as it is. So um, I think that's the gist of that. So you, you got 90% right on top of the head on you know, I would have liked to have used them for setting the uh, generator that we had here. Yep. But again, I couldn't at that point in time, and um, we could have saved a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Because the people that were using to do that, it's a six hundred dollar four hour minimum. Yep. And when John goes down and works down at the wastewater treatment plant, it's four hundred and fifty dollars. And previously, the other people were charging us a thousand fifty. It's a good so, saving. So yeah, so we're saving six hundred dollars each time we do it, which is basically seventy two hundred dollars a year. Right. Savings, not above and beyond. Right. Um yeah, I would like to be able to continue using them. Yeah. Um because he is basically the best deal around. Yeah. Um but if you decide not to, then we'll we won't. I don't have a problem with Kevin. I don't think and so. That, and that's why as soon as, because all of a sudden I walked down there, I looked and I'm like, <gasps> what are you doing here? Right. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'm working for such and such. I'm like, no, you're yeah. not. Right. So I, I freaked out. Like I said, I went and I got in touch with the lawyers out in Boston. Actually, I yep. talked with Johnny Pachurk first and I sure. talked with the people out there. So that's where she told me to go ahead and fill out form number 19. Yep. Uh, which she basically walked me through. So yeah, uh, pretty much what you see there for that form is, is what the lawyer told me to put down. And this is always and available for, for anybody if they exactly. need a public so document. Exactly. So as soon as you sign it, if you were to sign it, then that is to be posted with the clerk's office. Yep. So and then it is visible, available. Because that, that's what I'm told that it has to be happening. Yeah. And, and it has so to be really, with the clerk's office. So this is just uh, saying that the Minnesota employee, who they are, and that my duties require me to participate in a particular matter, and I may not, um, and I may not participate because of a financial interest that I'm disclosing here. I request a determination from the appointing authority, which is us, about how I should proceed, um, asking for a request for a ruling. Um, and I think, you know, again, I've, he's had an immediate family member. It's not immediate. Well, I guess well, they, they classify they it as immediate. immediate. Correct. Yep, because it's a brother-in-law. And um, and this was, we again, to capture this, we have a, used a vendor that is subcontracted uh, with my brother-in-law uh, for crane services, which I was not made aware of, uh, to remove the aerator from the tank of the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant. Uh, this was to remove buildup of rag material and put the aerator back into the tank. Uh, we've cut ties with the vendor after we found out they were charging <clears throat> quite a bit more, $1,000 instead of the $450. Um, so he, uh, he would like to continue to use Campbell Iron Works, which is his brother-in-law's crane system, for a savings of about 600 bucks or about $7,200 a year. He, has, uh, he states, I have no financial gain 
from using uh, cable ironworks, and it only benefits the town for the savings. So, again, I have no problem signing this. Anybody have any questions? Good. Okay. Oops. So I would make uh, take a motion to I'll sign. I'll make that motion to sign it. I second it. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So great. I'll give that a signature and get a copy for oh. you to post. And, and then we should make the motion authorize you to sign it. Okay, yeah, it is to me appointing uh, okay. authority. So. I amend my motion to include um, authorizing Trevor as chair to sign. Okay. I'm I'll sorry. second it. I didn't realize it All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. So I'll maybe you, uh, is there a fresh copy or do you want me to? Okay, so I think. Yeah, it should be, I, I turn in two copies. Then that yes, way, exactly. Um, one copy can go for posting and the second copy I could have for my files. Absolutely, yep, we'll get both signs. I just wanted to make sure my I's are dotted and my T's are crossed. Yep, and that's the right thing to do. There's the two copies. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> So the next item uh, was to review the uh, DBC contract for engineering services while you're here, Kevin. Um, this is uh, the services proposal for the collection system um, and asset management. So this is a, um, so as everyone remember, we've done a lot of work with our steward, but I'll just break this out a little bit. So we did an asset management study um, and we have an asset management plan that took into account both plants that we had and uh, all the manholes around town. Kind of what condition those were in. We labeled everything, took a picture of every manhole, so we've got that all nailed down. What um, needs to be done now um, is to, to camera every pipe in town, so in both ends of town. So that, that requires putting a, you know, a closed circuit TV camera down in these sewer lines and snaking them through and seeing what's in there, how bad they are, what condition they are, can they even get through. <laughs> You know, we've had blowouts all over the place, which are, you know, costing us a ton of money in cleanup. Um, so we had one over towards Elm Street a couple weeks back around Thanksgiving, and, and, and that was a fortune to, ex you know, to fix. So we have bad pipes everywhere. We've had, um, <clears throat> through conditions uh, or letters with the DEP, we, we do an I&I, &I, uh, so infiltration study of how much groundwater gets into our system, and, and then we there, therefore process. Um, and the idea is you want to process really just what goes in. You don't want to take in all the groundwater. And because their pipes are really old, cracked, you know, roots growing into them, we, we have a lot of leakage that goes into, into our system. So the idea is when we do a lot of this uh, sewer plant upgrades, we also have figured to do um, pipe replacement around town. So we'd like to upgrade our whole collection system. So. We have a, um, a proposal from uh, our engineer to start the process of cameraing every single pipe in town to, to get a full accounting of what that is and then break out a plan to start attacking that, you know, every couple of years to start, or every year to start, you know, mixing in with doing all the plant work, doing this work as well. Um, so that, just, uh, just tag on to that. Please. Um, you, you explained it, you know, great. The advantage of, the, well, first off, we're required to do this. DEP yes. says you're going to do it because this is part of our I&I. &I. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, again, this is the regulators telling us to do it. Yep. The advantage we have with this is, is then, like you said, we can see what the actual condition of the pipe is. Because realistically, if we don't do this, the only way to find out is to dig it up. Right. And if we can have an opportunity where we can glass line these, mm -hmm. instead of, you know, if, if the integrity is decent, but I got some cracks here and there, where I got a little bit of water coming in. And you could put a pipe in we, the middle we of it. Could, yeah, there. basically it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a film that goes in, and it basically, it, it seals the entire pipe. We did it on the north end of Old Deerfield 10 years ago. Okay. And, and it's worked fantastic. 
you know. Um, yeah. Basically, it goes in, it seals the whole pipe. Then they send another like little robot behind it and it falls all fall, finds all of the laterals coming in yep. and cuts the lateral out so that way it, it just continues to flow. I see. Um, okay. It's it's a really neat system on how it works and, and literally it can save us millions of dollars. Mm. You know, because you think about what it's going to cost the glass line compared to digging yeah. up and replacing in the whole mm -hmm. thing. Here, you're talking. Right. And some will obviously will be digging up and replacing. Kevin, but are, are the is that lining going to be covered under like an infrastructure program if if money is available? Do you think? Boy, I don't know. That's a stretch, but mm -hmm. anything's possible. Okay. I mean, you know, we can. We well, can but we would to... identify the areas that we would ha that are are too bad that you right. couldn't do that. You'd have right. to dig them up. Then you'd have yep. to dig them up. I right. think that's what's important because no infrastructure money has been available for three years or more now. Right. And I I feel like it's just when being it pent up. Yeah. All over the place. That's why I want our culvert assessment. Right. Um, oh, by the way, plan that's to go through. Starting. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. They so they just got the grant for that. Okay. And we just got okayed from from the cog, and he's going to come down here. He's going to be down here all summer. Okay. Great. Because so. what I want him to do on that, not to well, back up and one, yeah, tell okay. people what that is. So they all right. Understand. So we requested a, um, a grant money to um, have the fur cog. Uh, well, after Irene, DOT, Mass DOT. Um, wanted to go and assess their culverts and because we were I'm chair of the um, creating resilient communities group it's a work group of the conservation district um, and they are they were a participating agency we were able to convince them to include you know the areas along the Deerfield River so the north end of town pretty much got um, their culvert and crossings river assessed. Cross assessed so we have 119 documented and, and the conditions are not accurate at the moment because they're, it's older, but it at least gives us some priority, like the Mill Village mm -hmm. clearly was a priority culvert. Um, so what we had requested through um, uh, the state is, is technical assistant grant to have all the crossings in the rest of the town documented. He's just inventorying them. He's not actually assessing them. And what's going to happen is hopefully we would get a grant with tying bond. Um, they would put an application in for us to actually have the engineering assessment of the identified culverts. And so in other words, we're not spending money in our the grant assessment to identify like the we'll smaller ones. Right. The smaller ones that, that our DPW can do. But we can have them spend money on the assessing them the ones that need to be replaced or the other ones. So we're not having a situation like Keller Drive where we're hoping nothing happens before we replace it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, I mean, it was not on anybody's radar until you had the class that went and identified it. So Thanks, Ken. No, <laughs> no I'm glad. So the idea is to be ready for an infrastructure project. Yep. And we, we need to be ready with shovel some shovel-ready shovel projects, and this, including our pipes. And this is and where this I want to make sure that if we do this cameraing, then it, the areas that have, you know, roots mm -hmm. and blockages and terrible cracks that you can't fi fix, and right. maybe we can identify those and, and those parts can get. Exactly, you can get things taken care of, because I mean, obviously we're trying to get some roads paved here and there, and I really hate to have to go through and, you know, rip Chop something back up. Right. So know, put something in. So, so this, so. this, um, this proposal, from the engineer is to do one task one would be CCT the uh, inspection all the inroad piping which is about 179,300 and then it's CCTV inspection all the easements which is about 53,100 and then um, updated asset management database about 7,600 bucks and a summary report so all of that um, comes to about 246,800. I would like the approval to sign that, but I wanted to negotiate that fee a bit. Um, so I wanted to, I haven't had a chance to talk to David. I got this from Justin um, about last week, I think. And I just wanted to have a negotiation a little bit about and a discussion with him before we sign that. So we could wait till next meeting to sign it. I just wanted to kind of get it out on the table, start talking about this, but then also. Well, well I what I want to do is, is to this. negotiate. Um, some kind of ready application mm -hmm. uh, out of this. Okay. Where, where, where they're charging us for updating the database and the summary report, mm -hmm. that money combined should
should be enough to be able to do some kind of application. Okay. And I, I so I want to make sure that whatever information that they find is can be translated into a grant application. Right. Uh, it doesn't. I'm not asking them to write the grant application. I but, realize. That yeah, we would. They won't. But yeah. it needs to be, the information needs to be ready that it could be just inserted Slid into a, a grant. Right. Okay. Yep. I mean, to me, so that's, there's a few things I want to talk about cost, okay. and I want to talk about scope, and then that a little bit more. But this was just kind of to get the ball rolling that we have to I mean, do I'm this. It's required. You know, we we told DEP in our letter that we're doing this, so we, we just About need 26 to... miles of. Place. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of camera. So, question I have is, it works so well with the crane. Yep. Yeah. Couldn't you go directly to the camera people? <laughs> it could be, but and I not have to pay the engineering costs. Oh, um, he's traveling yeah, on top of that, the day, and they can supply the reports. I know companies that do do it. That's if, my, if you my got, twin brother, yeah, did. if you want me to start reaching out, and I can. Because but the question, the question I have is, is, is how is that going to correlate with the rest of the information that has to be compiled? That's my only question. Well, that's yeah. Let's make. Let's I, I, I understand where you're coming from, but the other side of the coin is, is we have to be cautious about piecemealing because actually, you start peeling a little bit of this and peeling a little bit of that. Then my question is, is who's going to put it all back together in well, the end thought, you to know, be able to have everything? I had ready run to go. into that's them all. in uh, Long Meadow, and they were actually doing the camera work. But maybe not. Maybe they sub it. So it's a great question. So right. let's find out about some yeah. of this. So stuff. basically, it's, it's it's they're a small company. They don't they don't do their own camera work. No, I actually, they, they do. Them. Yeah. Yeah. They, they bought they bought a positive. camera truck. Oh, yeah. 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 It's positive they were doing that. Yeah. So. It's a big. It's a it's a small small van style. Yeah. And the whole back of it is camera setup along with reels with the with the camera that's got the motor on it, the whole yeah. thing and drives it. And yes, those will be the engineers it won't be subbed out to somebody else okay. right but if you want i can i can still try and break this apart but well I'll, like i'll I said, once a little it bit uh, start breaking well, it apart you, i'm just saying that maybe if we look at somebody else and get another price that mm -hmm. gives us a better sure. leverage yep. for negotiating with him sure. absolutely not a problem yep. i'm not not worried about that at all so okay so i think i'll just bring this back i don't we don't want to take any right any action on this, but I just wanted to get the, get the ball rolling, and we got to get it going soon and have it ready for, yep. you know, want to get it going pretty quick. So, okay, good. Um, that's it for me. That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, um, we're mm -hmm. going to wait on the MVP, right? And yeah. then we are going to wait on the other MVP, and then uh, can we, rec uh, I wanted, I, w I do have an executive session, but we have a little bit of time. I want to do the um, request for appointment to the police department. Which I think we had here. Yes, here we go. So um, I'll just read this quickly. So, dear honorable board, I'm re um, respe respectfully requesting the following individual be appointed as a part time officer to, uh, for the town of Deerfield with a term to expire June 30th, 2020. Gregory M. Uh, Moretti, uh, who currently resides in Salem, Massachusetts, and is um, and is new to the profession, training rate of $12 an hour and uh, rate after completion of field training officer, program is 1650. Greg will be moving to Deerfield area in late January and uh, completes the part-time police academy on Tuesday, January 28th. So congratulations, you just did. Greg also served um, in the Marine Corps with the full-time officer, uh, Tim Bowen. Uh, he has earned a master's degree in business management from Suffolk University with an undergraduate degree from UMass Amherst in uh, sociology and criminal justice. Um, as the board is aware, we have lost several officers either to full-time positions with other agencies and uh, Chad Ris Ris uh, Risley recently to the Secret Service. Um, Chief trains them very well and <laughs> they're sought after. So um, I'd make a motion to, um, or take a motion to approve. Make that motion. I'll second it. Any further discussion, comments? No, it's just thank you for finding good people. Yeah, continue yeah, to do that. But, uh, I talked to the chief about this a little bit because of this gentleman's credentials. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Pretty impressive. Yes. Uh, you know, but he has a strong desire to be a law enforcement officer. So, you know, it would uh, be good to have him on board. Absolutely. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Done. Um, the, uh, the chief, if we could, 
or doing the appointments, if we could have the person that we're appointing come to the meeting? I know he's in Salem, but yeah, it would be good just, to just meet so them. We see the face? Yeah, it would be good to get to know them. And just, yeah, you know. it's a good idea. Um, so, uh, last would be review and approve Scanlon and Associates CPA uh, engagement letter for FY20 through 22 audit services. Um, and Scanlon's do a wonderful job keeping us together and straight um, and auditing all of our stuff. So, so I you just. Have two, two letters. One is actually for your regular audit services, and then one I understand is for the federal audit services you'll need for your USDA. Correct. Loan and grant program. Um, just yeah. understand that here. So, yes, one is for 20, 21, 22 rates. Um, and then the second. It's for our. Um, is that accurate? Let me just see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pension plan schedules, other post retirement benefits. Oh, will not be audited. Okay. The following RSI is required by general accepted accounting principles and will be subject to certain limited procedures but not be audited. We also have engaged. Um, um, how do we, how do we uh, get our OPEB money certified then if he's not going to audit it? I think he, no, I think. Um, I mean, it's, it, they audit it in the yes. sense that it's in the count. Right. It so that's, Barb, that's she, enough. Right? Yeah. And Barbara's she's here. not in at the moment. Okay. But, um, I just, I want to make sure that. Um, yeah, and I, when I was in Boston, I talked with um, Bartholomew, who, who was managing it. And I think, you know, to back up our other post-retirement benefits, um, we've finally instituted a policy to start saving for that. We're, woefully under saving for it, but we're, we're starting the process anyways. Um, and that money uh, can be invested and take a little more risk because it's long term. It's like it's a teenager. <laughs> it's got a lot of time, long time before we're going to need the money. So um, it can have a little more risk than, than say, somebody who's just about to retire. Um, so that money uh, we had a little bit kind of set aside. And then um, last year we, we put together a plan that we would take 4% of what we're paying our retirees now um, and put that into an OPEB fund. I'd like to increase that, but we're working on that. Um, but that money then goes into a trust fund, which I think she has put in with Bartholomew now. She could answer this for sure. But um, That's what I mean. I just want to make sure that we're getting credit for actually putting aside some too. money. You know, I mean, it's little money. But, oh yes. I mean, yeah, no, they're recognizing. This, but uh, we we need to be recognized. Yes, we are. Doing it. We are. Okay. Yeah, all that. He's, it's included in the reports, but he doesn't audit the trust fund. He right. Doesn't That's part of the fund. Exactly. He just includes it in the reports. So in his report. The management discussion. Okay. The gas fee. I'm sure yep. it's gas fine. Fee. Correct. Because we've had worked with Tom for years. So what you have actually, I'm sorry, Tom, you have years. you have an. Um, Two agreements. One is actually for the fiscal 20, uh, for the year that ended uh, 19, so the, the 19 audit. Right. And then the 20, 21, and 22. Audit. Which are more money. Right. Yes. Correct. So we had 14,000 for the, the for three <coughs> years coming are going to have the are going to be audit. exactly it's a little bit more federal stuff. So. Exactly. Um, so that's why there's two separate. Yep. So I would take a motion to approve um, each of these, or um, do you want to do them separately? So. The June thirtieth audit for fourteen thousand. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then the audit for the next three years. Okay, we'll do. Thank you. The next three years will be um, for FY twenty twenty one twenty two because um, we just did nineteens. So um, and those are for. Um, there's the financial statement audit and then the yellow book single audit, which um, totals 17,000 for 20, 17,500 for 21 and 22. I make that motion. Any further discussion? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So, and that. I assume Barbara and Brenda have looked at these. Yes. yes. Yep. Yep. 
Yes, it will sign those and get those to you. Okay, so we are at a point where we can um, do a short um, executive session because we have a half hour before our other meeting and then we'll come back and take care of some old business. So um, let's see, I'll, I'll read this declaration. So uh, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 21A, sec uh, Paragraph 6, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property if the chair declares uh, that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on a negotiating position, of the public body, recreation, general municipal purposes, which I do. So um, I make that motion to enter into executive session. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Wolfram. And we'll be um, returning to open session shortly. Good evening and welcome back to the Select Board Board of Health meeting, January 29th, uh, 2020. Uh, we're reconvening after executive session and special town meeting at uh, 725. So welcome back everybody. Um, what we have on our agenda uh, to start with um, would be um, a meeting with the joint meeting with the library trustees. So we're gonna go over some uh, snow closure policy and um, uh, constitution of trustees, um, or the election warrant, so we're going to stagger some stuff. So actually, I don't. I think we I think the election we finished that out. Set. The election yeah. set. Yeah. Okay. We so we had it on there. I think from before. Right. So yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so we're <laughs> we're going to talk to you about increased hours. Um, oh yeah. For a staff person. Exactly. That was yeah. the other item. Yes. So um, the warrant. We were just to clarify for the public. We were going to. Um, you've reconstituted how many trustees you have, and then we were going to stagger the uh, elections coming this year so that. You know, you have one going every time of yes, year, so because yeah. um, they were all going at once. So, um, well, let's we can kick off with the uh, whichever policy you want to start with first. You want to do hours or the snow policy? Probably or? the snow policy. Okay. So can you can you hear me all right? With yes. This? Okay. Yeah. So um, basically, I, I handed the three of you um, some information, uh, the background of the policy as it is, and then the case for keeping it because well. The, the back story is that this policy we have, which is actually called the emergency closing policy, and it's posted on our website. It was voted into um, uh, existence by the Board of Trustees on um, December 6, 2006, and then revised March 2, 2016. And so it's been a, a public um, policy. And, what, and basically what it is is how the library responds to emergency closing uh, potential. Mm -hmm. So like on a snow day, usually, snow right. or ice. Yep. Um, and the way that it had worked, uh, according to the policy as it's written, is that the uh, library director will decide, or has been deciding, and would talk to the trustee chair, and then um, a notice will be given to all the staff and um, you know all the local news out outlets, uh, the outgoing telephone message, and anyone that was um, scheduled to work that day would get paid, and um, and if we did open, and they were scheduled to work but couldn't come in, then they wouldn't get paid. So it's about if we decided to close but they were ready to come in and we were closing, they wouldn't get paid. And so what happened was uh, recently back in, I think it was December, mm -hmm. after we had decided to close on a pretty pretty bad snowy day, yeah. and um, it, it came across to the um, payroll on our timesheets that we uh, weren't open and we were getting paid and so um, someone reached out to me and I said oh well, that's our policy and it opened a can of worms of well can library policy be different from town policy as far as when deciding to open or close the building and if employees should get paid so the trustees and I met and we did a lot of research and so what this is is um, our case for keeping the library policy as it is and the reasons why and then we have examples of other local libraries uh, throughout the state that have the same policy. And then we did have also um, the American Library Association, which is our national accrediting um, agency, responded to my email asking about this. And they said that um, Massachusetts general law establishes that um, governing um, boards uh, can make this policy. 
So for us, that felt like it's the bottom line, is that the trustees do have the ability to make this policy. And um, when you're ready, we can go into the case, the reasons why we want to stay and with then, the policy. And then, so I guess to, to uh, speak to that a little bit, and, and uh, when this came to my attention, because mm -hmm. people were asking, well, um, how come the library uh, uh, employees are getting paid and, and, our, and our town employees are not? And, library employees are town employees. So when we set policy as a town, and um, all the policies really govern every employee in the town, so we're trying to figure out um, how do we mesh those two, where you have a governing body of, a, um, of an entity, but all the employees are town policy and are governed by all of our personnel policies, how can they differ from all the people that work in town hall? So um, I kind of wanted to try and do a little research on our end too as to um, how do we you know how do we how do we deal with that so mm -hmm. you know I know this has been an acting policy for a while and um, I'm not sure why it hasn't come up before um, <laughs> so because uh, I, I imagine there's been other times where you've closed and yeah many other times yeah so um, I, I really just wanted to, today I want to get that conversation started and understand uh, you know, from you, where, where your thoughts were, where you felt, how you felt the, that they would have governing authority, what are the limitations? Can you govern all kinds of policies for your employees? And hmm. um, how, wh where do we slice that difference? And mm -hmm. um, should, should all employees in town be treated the same way? You know, is it a fairness issue? Why, <coughs> you know, why do we not pay other people when it's a snow day? And it's a very rare occasion, and it's, mm -hmm. You know, and then it has to do with part-time and full-time people. So, mm -hmm. does um, the town, excuse me, does the town pay employees on snow days? No, I don't. Uh, maybe could I ask? So this is a little bit outside my mm -hmm. realm because I'm not HR. I'm, you know, just I, mm -hmm. I pretend to be a selectman. Mm -hmm. So, but Barbara is, um, you know, does all of our payroll um, and has instituted all of our policies for years. And uh, Brenda signs the check. So, um, the short answer to that is um, the basic. Would be anybody benefited full time or part time, 20 hours or more, um, have some sort of um, anticipation of having those hours. They were hired for those hours, they fulfill those hours. So if we tell them we can't come in because we're closed, those people would get paid based on that. If they were scheduled to work, not if they're on vacation or mm -hmm. they're not right. the day to work, um, and not if they're not benefited. An hourly person. Um, doesn't get holiday, doesn't get snow days, if you mm -hmm. know. Even if they were scheduled to work. Even if they're scheduled to work that day. Yes. Hourly. Okay. So how many employees do you have are in that in that um, um, all but me and um, my position in the children's librarian. So, so that's every, about eight. Everyone else is uh, under twenty hours a week. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't all be working. If it was like a of course, okay. be like right. two they, they would be or, eligible right. under this policy, but usually we have two people working at a time, someone downstairs and someone upstairs. Yeah. Um, or actually three when I'm there. Right. So, um, so it would be two benefited people, unless I'm not scheduled to be in that day, then it would be one benefited person and one unbenefited. But they're ours because, and this is so true for so many libraries, um, the, full, the benefited people uh, it was a very small percentage of the staff. Right. It's a lot of really part-time people. You just and just fill out where you can. And yes, and even the people that work, you know, like week to week. Um, in fact, one of our people works 19 hours, so she's mm -hmm. not benefited at all, but she works, you know, right. um, almost 20 hours. And um, we just felt like it was fair because actually, I think one of the reasons why it came to be this, the, the paying the employees is that we have someone working for us that also works at the Sunderland Library. Mm -hmm. And we had a snow day and he realized that they weren't getting paid. And he said, oh, in Sunderland, this is our policy. Would you consider that? And they decided mm -hmm. that that, was, that felt really fair. Hmm. And, um, and then when I reached out to, you know, as you can see by all the emails yep. and everything, yes. that a lot of people do and a lot of libraries do. And um, when you're ready, if you want me to, I can go down the list yeah. of, of the reasons. Just to, just because I want to flush this out, and sure. then um, I mean, just make sure we're just, when we make sure. a decision, it's right. I, oh, go ahead. If I could just Please. make a comment about you know benefited employees versus non-benefited, I think like a benefited employee, it was conveyed to the trustees that 
a person might be a part-time employee, non-benefited, and they depend, they set aside that time for that Saturday mm -hmm. shift, and they depend on that really probably more than somebody that works full-time, full and it is, mm -hmm. you know, a real hardship if, if, mm -hmm. if, the, if, if there is a snow day and work is called for no fault of theirs, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was the thinking behind it, to, to have people, you know, they're, they're depending on that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's their livelihood even if they're part-time. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. So I'm just going to read on the list. <laughs> yeah, this is a piece for keeping policy as is. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So yeah. the second page. Yep. Um, the, the library is able only able to open if the parking all parking areas and walkways leading to the front and back entrances, so two e uh, mm -hmm. ways of egress, are cleared and safe, which means it has to be shoveled, you know, plowed, shoveled, salted. Um, as a public building with a lot of par parking and foot traffic, we need our grounds to be safe and accessible. Mm -hmm. um, I had the, there was a question before Deerfield Schools and Senior Center can open, are all of their parking areas and walkways and entrances cleared and safe for walking, just mm -hmm. uh, for comparison. Yep. Um, I don't know this for sure, but I think that we're the only town department that has to tr uh, shovel and treat its own walkways after opening. Okay. And many times staff is not able to do that. Either we're too busy or if someone is having, you know, we have, do have some older staff people sure. who have some um, back issues and, and wouldn't mm -hmm. feel comfortable going out and shoveling. Um, but that's to make it safe for the people that are coming into the building. Yeah. Um, and even though we are a town department, we do pay for a, a private company to clear our walkways. So mm -hmm. we get our lot, our parking lot um, plow, but we don't get our walkways um, cleared by okay. the town. Um, and if we don't have enough staff, if for some reason somebody doesn't feel safe coming in, mm -hmm. and say there's, that leaves one person coming in on a right. two-floor building that's yes. open to the public, yeah, it's just safe. it's not it's not um, mm -hmm. it's not possible and not safe. Mm -hmm. um, the library is open very different hours from the other town departments, and it's it's kind of like a um, a staggered schedule. It's not like we. Um, open when the town hall isn't. We mm -hmm. overlap, so right. we open sometimes at one o'clock and close at eight p.m. We're open on Saturdays, so making um, a decision for a time when other departments might not be open. Right. That's like that's one of yeah, the one of that. the many reasons I feel like it's sort of apples and oranges, even though yeah. we're a part of a group. Because we're not here making decisions on a Saturday for people, or right? Right. Um, or at know, night. Or evening at night. Or at night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Although we cancel meetings sometimes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I, and I'm the first one to say, you not know, I don't want to drive. I'm not going to drive the hill. Anymore. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I did uh, look back as one of the things uh, you'll see further down in the email that I heard back from the American Library Association is just to show that, um, or maybe you didn't let's see. Oh, the history of our closures to show that we're not abusing this this uh, right to have this policy on our own. Mm -hmm. That looking back as far as I could on mm -hmm. our website, so I think back to like 2016, we closed one to three times okay. a year. So that's, yeah. I felt like that was fine. Um, and like Cindy was saying, the staff, the staff who are scheduled to be paid, um, their time is already budgeted for. Mm -hmm. And so it's not gonna be costing the town more to pay them for that time. Yeah. And piggybacking on, again, what Cindy said about, because they're very part-time and they rely on that, that time, that money, um, number one, it would cause them financial hardship, and number two, if we were to give them the optional, why don't you work from home? Many people can't work from home because they're serving people at the desk, mm -hmm. so they don't do things off the desk, right. or they're putting away books, or yep. you know, it's you know work whatever. At the place. Yep. So they they couldn't have that option, um, okay. and it's not they don't make a lot of money, sadly. Mm -hmm. um, and then also the other Massachusetts libraries have the same policy. I have that sample attached, and or samples. Yep. And then I have the email from the um, American Library Association. So that's basically it in okay. a nutshell. <laughs> um, so. So the cover page is the actual policy that you're going by now. Yeah. The, What's the, that? The, the cover page. The cover page is the policy as yeah. it ha has been. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, and then uh, I, you know, I also just trying to figure out, you know, because I, I, at being chair this year, I'd never really thought about this before, but you know, the question comes up with, you know, for for the town, who, 
who makes the decision on a snow day. You know, I'll, lately you. I've been, you know, the, as a chair, I, I'll call Kevin Scarborough and I'll say, mm -hmm. how are the roads? How is access to the building? Um, check in with, you know, Barb or with um, town administrator and, you know, what's happening? Uh, is it going to be, you know, it depends on a storm too. Like, I think mm -hmm. this year we closed at one, um, maybe the last storm because um, the, the roads were just deteriorating. It wasn't supposed to be so bad, but mm -hmm. by the time 12 came or quarter one, it was, I was driving on the roads all day, but I could see that the roads were just getting worse. And it's, you want people to get home when it's daylight. You know, usually in the winter, it's much darker earlier. And so it's a safety kind of thing for me. And so I, you know, I wasn't sure really what our policy is. And I don't think we have um, something specific as far as a town policy is uh, for snow closure. And, and I could be wrong, somebody correct me, but. Um, I don't think it was, uh, it's the board's decision. Right, just when, yeah, so it hasn't really, um, so it's the, we just kind of wing it really as to what's going on. And, and uh, you know, I looked at, um, I think maybe Diana, Town of Northfield, up. I yeah, think. Yeah, Town of Northfield's uh, policy. We got several policies, but that was the one I think you... Yeah, this is the one that I thought was fairly... Um, was and interesting, because the Northfield Library makes their own decision. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> well, that's interesting at the end, but I didn't get much clarity, because at the end of their... Yeah, so, uh, D, delay... Uh, I could read this whole thing, but delay, cancellation, or early departure of work for senior center, library, and recreational department employees on evenings, weekends, and holidays... Um, the Council on Aging Director, Recreation Director, and Library Director will determine if operations in their respective departments should be delayed, mm -hmm. canceled, or curtailed due to weather on evenings, weekends, and holidays and notify the employees concerned um, as early as possible. It said the town administrator should, notify, um, should be notified of any such action but need not be consulted except under unusual circumstances. Um, and so really their policy Maybe I will take the time to go through this so people can understand. So um, the purpose of it was the policy, uh, the following policy is intended to ensure a consistent and uniform approach across all town departments when the town administrator determines that non-emergency services will be reduced or canceled. In this case, it's the town administrator that, that makes the decision. Um, it is the policy of the town of Northfield to maintain regularly scheduled work hours at town hall except for conditions that would adversely affect the safety of employees. In doing so, the board recognizes weighing uh, the need to have town hall open to serve the public against the potential of hazard, uh, personal injury associated with travel during severe weather. So um, applicability. This policy applies to general government, management, administrative, and support personnel regardless of work location. Um, it does not apply to police and fire personnel, essential highway department personnel. Luckily, they don't get a snow day. Um, so uh, let's see, and, and essential call-in personnel. Essential personnel are defined by the department head and or the town administrator of his or her uh, designee and may change for each situation. So the policy, A, absence from work due to weather when town operations are not reduced or canceled. All employees are expected to be present at work regardless of weather conditions unless, the, unless they request and are granted appropriate leave. If an emergency situation occurs before or during the morning commute hours, employees should take a responsible amount of time necessary to arrive at work safely. Employees who prefer to use accumulated vacation or uh, compensatory time, a leave time, in lieu of reporting to work are allowed to do so. In general, if the Pioneer Valley Regional School District closes or has a delayed opening <clears throat> as a result of the weather, Town employees may use up to one uh, extra hour in the morning beyond their normal start time to ensure a safe travel, uh, safe arrival at work without loss of pay or use of accumulated leave time. Unless the municipal building is closed by the town administrator or his or her designee, employees who do not report to work at all must use their own vacation or compensatory accumulated leave for all hours they were scheduled uh, to work for that day. Early departure from work, this is B. Uh, the town administrator in consultation with head, department heads will monitor weather conditions and assess the needs for the continuation of a routine uh, town operations. Early departures from work for personnel due to weather 
conditions will be authorized by the town administrator. The town administrator will communicate an authorization, the authorization to dismiss personnel to all departments. Department heads are not authorized to, to dismiss personnel due to weather conditions prior to authorization without a, chain, without a charge to appropriate, um, let's see. Without yeah, the charge. Without, without a charge to appropriate leave banks, except in extenuating circumstances. Leave taken by an employee to depart early will not be restored if a subsequent early departure or closing is authorized. Um, employees who are, who are on scheduled paid time off or lunch with the scheduled return time after early release is authorized will receive pay for the early release. Department heads will attempt to notify the employees not to return to work. Um, in the event that non-exempt employees are required to remain at work or report to work after the municipal building in which they work has been closed they will be entitled to receive in addition to their regular pay uh, for that day bank uh, compensatory time for the time worked after the designation uh, this compensatory time must be used at an agreed to time with the town administrator so it looks like if they're you know they get a little bit of time if they've got to stay here uh, delay or cancellation of work for non-emergency uh, employees prior to start of the work day, uh, Monday through Friday, so typical snow day. Um, it is the policy of the town of Northfield to compensate employees who cannot report for work when the municipal building they work for is closed due to emergency situation. So the town administrator and department heads will monitor weather conditions and assess the need to delay or cancel non-emergency non town operations due to severe weather. Um, uh, delayed or cancellation of non-emergency operations will be authorized by the town administrator based on weather conditions. Any such decision will be made as early as feasible. Employees on vacation, sick or personal leave, or otherwise not scheduled to work during the affected period of time are not eligible to be paid under this policy. If the municipal building is not closed by the town administrator, employees who do not report to work um, at all may receive compensation if they choose to or personal or, vac or vacation time. Uh, delays or cancellation notification will be made by the town administrator or other designee by phone. The decision will be communicated to the highway department and police department. This is D, the last. Delay, cancellation, or early departure for work for senior center. Oh, I read this already. For senior center libraries and all. So, um, again, the, the library director will determine if, if operations for the respective departments should be delayed, canceled, or curtailed. Um, so that's, it sounds like. So that's so Monday through Friday. It's, so this is what, you know, I think yeah. Candace and I talked about this too, but so Monday through Friday, it's the town administrator in consult with the department. But then yes. after hours, it's the department head for the Right, program. and it seems like um, if you were scheduled to work, you'd be paid, right? I mean, if that's... If it's did closed I get that by from the that? town. Mm -hmm. Right, if it's typically closed by the town. Um, yeah. And really the question, you know, is on off, off times... Um, right, because I think some, some of the challenge, I mean, some of the... the, the uh, this issue also arose because we did different things. The town hall didn't close and the library did Correct. on a day that... It was pretty bad. Well, the weather in the morning was bad when we didn't close, right. but it got better during the day, but then it worsened. Yes, <laughs> so, I know. It was kind of so, in the yeah, middle. So, yeah, so you could have... So, so I think does. reasonably the library could have opened at 1, right. but they couldn't have stayed open till 8. They mm -hmm. would have had to close, you know, early. Yes, it did get bad um, later so on. So the, they closed entirely, and then when the, salary, when the wages were reported, they were reported as holiday wages. So that's why they alerted, you know, the payroll department that right. it was an unusual thing that there was a bunch of holiday pay. Right. Um, I think in the past when the wages were submitted, they were submitted as regular wages. So right. there may not have been clarity on the closure, you know, who was closing or not. So now we just want clo we want clarity on who determines the closures mm -hmm. and then if, if staff's going to be paid, you know, based on those determinations. Right. My personal feeling is that um, their op library operation has different hours and, and they know um, the people that work there and the circumstances of the people that work there. And to me, it's, I mean, I have all the years that I've been a select board person, I felt that was their decision. Mm -hmm. You know you know your place, you know your people, mm -hmm. and, and you, know, you know the weather. 
for those hours. They're different than the town hall hours. I mean, I mean, I joke about canceling meetings, but you know, Skip knows I'm not coming to a meeting if it's if it's snowing. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, but we I'm don't get paid either. <laughs> So, but, um, but, you know, so, I mean, that's just my feeling. I, I you know. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. My, my only concern, and I talked to Candace about this before, is uh, clarity and fairness for all employees in town. Because if you're going to do one thing for one, you have to kind of think oh, no, about you need what to be is, consistent. You need to be consistent. And we haven't really been consistent. I don't. I, don't, I haven't been doing this long enough to know, but I don't know how consistent we have been, but I want to make sure that payroll knows or Barb knows what happens, when it happens, and you know, there, there's a policy for it. And people, you know, it is what it is. Whatever we decide or how the town decides, it's how it decides. But I just want some clarity for people. And um, you know, this one, again, says town administrator does all this stuff, and maybe we get to that point. We've had transition and all over the place, so we haven't really... Um, I have a, a question. Mm -hmm. um, the, I know when you first read the policy, you started with the section of the other town yeah. departments. Yep. And I did, Deb Kern, who's the director there, yep. and I think she's been there for a while, um, said that she, yeah, she checks in with the highway department and yep. um, police department maybe. And checks in with the trustee and yep. she makes the decision anyone's schedule gets paid. Yep. So it sounds like. I think they follow that. Yeah, so it's I mean, not about it the town like, decisions, about the, about the director decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and it seems like, uh, let's see, it says delay, cancellation, or early departure for work for senior centers, library, recreational department employees on evenings, weekends, and holidays is that section. So it sounds like normally, and maybe they, they operate it differently than what their policy maybe. is. Maybe. <laughs> but their, poli <laughs> their policy is typically yeah. um, during the day hours, the town administrator makes that decision probably in cons consultation with the director, right. but any kind of off hours, it's the director that makes the decision, which makes sense. Um, and then, so we really just need to figure out, um, you know, how that does, and then and then about pay for people that are not, you know, that are not, uh, sal you know, not benefited. Benefited. Um, and we just have to think how that affects other people. Barb, do you have anything you'd want to add or weigh in? Like, how many people that do we affect um, when we're doing this kind of work? Like, who, who who winds up? Who is not benefited? Who doesn't get paid? Like, do we have real life examples of positions in town that would not be paid? Um, I think of the transfer station. If we close the transfer station they're less than 18, 19 hours a week or 20 hours a week, do, do they get paid if we close it on a Tuesday? Because they don't make a lot of money. They Very similar. They're relying on town operations, and it's not their fault it snows or, I mean, they stand out there in the rain and freezing cold anyways. But, um, I think the best example is in, in the town offices here, yeah. we had um, a person who was not getting paid because they were working the but um, that was part time. Yep. So if there was a holiday on Monday, but she doesn't get paid for Monday. Right. And if there was a snow day on Monday, then she wouldn't get paid for Monday. Right. So, um, and, but that's, and we don't have that position. But are there any, yeah. I mean, that sounds like one position, well, whereas. I'm, 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 oh. I'm, I'm, I'm choosing we, an example yeah. that's sure. uh, very defined, um, uh, has a regular schedule, um, and so that's the case. Oh, you got a mic there. Okay. So um, Skip is on our yes. personnel yes. committee. My, so. my voice is loud enough. Yes. Yep. Uh, Skip is on our personnel committee. In town, and I don't know how that affects the senior center or the library, but typically in town, if you're under 20 hours a week, and as our mentioned, if you've got an employee who would normally be scheduled to work on Monday, and it's a Monday holiday. Last so last Monday, for example, uh, that person wouldn't get paid. Uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays for the for the uh, transfer station attendants. If they don't work, they don't get paid. And uh, although I can't remember the last time that we actually closed the transfer station, but uh, they would typically not get paid if. Uh, if they didn't work that day. I think we just did during the last storm. I thought we just had to close the transfer station during the last storm. I 
thought did we, we closed close the transfer station. We did. Last I thought we. I think we did close the transfer. So the question is, do we? we do we, we as a town want to continue that policy or not? I guess is the real question. Well, the the other thing that I wanted to mention, uh, I did hear some conversation about shoveling, uh, plowing, mm -hmm. and and uh, mowing. Uh, yes. We, we are in consultation with the Finance Committee. Brenda primarily is in consultation with the Highway Department as to how, if we're going to make any changes and what those changes may right. be. So there may or may not be resolutions to your concerns about yeah. those. Uh, been, but I just want to throw we that We did out. at the Senior Center. We, we kind of moved away and had the town stuff taken over that. So it was a three-town thing, and there was just discussion. Mm -hmm. and I, I think we only have the transfer station as part-time people right now. Yeah, the Sue at the senior center is also part time. Okay. Or, you know the the system. Sue. Helps. So yeah. so we're talking about three people on the town level, at one of the lowest pay scales that don't get paid. I mean that just doesn't seem very mm -hmm. correct. What well, happens around ahead. the Thanksgiving holiday? You actually open the transfer station on a different day than Thursday. I know. So you, you yeah. covered them for that day. If if you look at the last year. No, I'm, well, I'm thinking like a snow day if, they, if we have to close yeah, them. Yeah, if we have to close. a holiday day to what Skip was talking about. Right, yeah, holiday. It actually got reversed, if you will. Or right, it does. Yeah, we, we always, we, yeah, there is another day for a I mean, it has, I, I mean, again, in all my years, I think it's only a few times in the winter, like, I mean, you're talking about, you said one to three. That sounds correct. Yeah, and the my, amount of money we're talking. In my experience, yeah. too. So. But, uh, you know what? I, I know I, it's, it's small okay. potatoes. It really is. But what happens Mr. at the school with their part-time staff when there's a snow day? Uh, that's the, a good uh, question. The part-time oh, staff, the uh, sometimes the superintendent refers to them as not essential, which is <laughs> I don't know if he's ever worked in the real life, but um, the um, they they have to report to work. If they don't report the work, they have to use either personal time or vacation time. On a snow day? On a snow day? You mean for... for on a snow day, it's closed. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's what it looks like. That becomes my fear in all this. Right, it's how it affects you. If you here, then everybody over at the school will be know how many part-time folks there are over there. Right. Because over here, they seem to work 22 hours and need to be benefited before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. It's going to lead to other issues there. You know, does this become something? It's a bigger discussion. Yes, exactly. There is a little bit further. Because I think that this is going to make a bigger impact on the couple of folks at the library. And is a short term resolution if those folks are counting on those funds and they're really up to free to work? Could they be brought in later in the week to make up those hours? No. Okay. Just let me point out one thing uh, when it comes to the schools. For better or worse, they're contracted. They're, well, no, it's the school committee has the authority as opposed to the town meeting, right. which everyone else has. So, I, I guess I just want to verify that, in fact, they don't get paid because. Well, it, it's irrelevant because they, they may not get paid today, but school committee could change its mind and pay them right. tomorrow. Or they could be paid today and the school committee could change it and not pay them tomorrow. It's not. It's yes, yeah, not town, town authority. I know. And they close at different times in the school as well. Yeah. They make their own decision about closing. I would also say, with, with respect to the school, you have a contracted amount yeah. of, snow, of school days. So if you have a snow day, they're making it up at the end of the yeah. year. So the mm -hmm. would be oh, actually, that's yeah. really yeah. true. That's so, true. Whereas the library, it's, it's lost. You know. Right. And they're independent decision we're makers. We're talking about two different things, right? Yeah. I think we're talking more yeah, about right. like, uh, after school personnel. Not teacher. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Upton? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, discussing this with you, definitely have to have a policy review. Uh, I've lived in town here for 40 some odd years, and it's always been the specific reason why we've been hiring part time people for under 20 hours has been one specific reason, and that is so you would not have to pay the benefits. Everything over. You pay the benefits if they went full time. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's the crux of the whole situation here. Yep. That that was the idea. Of the difference between part time and full time 
and to get to the point where I think with what you're trying to achieve, I think you need to, I think Skip's absolutely right, Matt's absolutely right. You've got to go back and review your policy and have that discussion with personnel board and select board. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah, also, also, you're going to have to face the town voters at some point in time. Of course. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, and, and it's just... The main thing tonight was to kind of start discussing this week. You know, this came up in December in that first storm, and I was, we've been trying to get it on a schedule, and it's been hard to kind of fit it in. But, um, but it was tonight to kind of hear, you know, what other libraries are doing, why you do it the way you do, learn from, you know, H, you know, our payroll department, what typically happens, what are the, what are the unintended consequences, how do we do it fairly. How do we responsible employers, you know, um, and responsible the taxpayers? So, um, I think the main thing was just to kind of understand that tonight. And um, I, I don't think we're going to make a decision tonight, and whether we have that authority or not, and it only solely resides there. That's something else that probably a lawyer would have to answer. But I don't think we need to go that far. So, I just really wanted to kind of get that going, and and and. Um, and I, I truly wanted to kind of look at this for town-wide having a policy on snow closures, period, regardless of pay or not pay, who does that and when. Um, so uh, I'm not sure we will solve this well enough so, tonight. Yeah. So does no, that I, mean I then? I want to table it to find out. But, uh, but right. I'm just thinking of like it snows next week. Right. This is really the key of like, and I think have, we've been going on the assumption this year is that people would get paid because that has been your policy until we make one yeah. um and i think i'm comfortable just continuing that for now but um you know and, and, either way and giving doing. them the authority to close or yeah. open i mean that's your yeah. the uh, you know here again the trustees are an electric board mm -hmm. and they're supposed to be governing and we are so governing yeah we are governing yeah you know, the other thing I've got to add is, you know, I spent 30 years of my career as management and negotiating union contracts. I'll tell you right now, this would have caused all kinds of problems. If somebody was on a vacation day and they were charged with that vacation day, but the other employees that weren't there because of the weather weren't charged with a vacation day and were getting paid, that never would have folded. You know, either everybody gets charged vacation day or nobody gets charged vacation day. Hmm, that's interesting. Or yeah. personal time or however you want to look at it. You can't have that inequity between the two. Yeah. Well, that's, I, I really think this is an issue of equity as well. Yeah. And I think there's inequity between benefited employees and non-benefited. Yeah. And the non-benefited are already making the least of anyone in the town mm -hmm. and to also take away their hours because right. it's they can't make up their hours right. or work from home. Right. Mm -hmm. So they lose the pay. They lose the day, so that's what do you mean the they thing. couldn't make up their hours? Like so so I was curious when you said no they can't come. Like if you decided, okay, can you come in and do some work here for six hours uh, because, next Thursday um, or something? Or? Because of the work they do, we already have someone on staff doing that job. And so you don't have other tasks for them to do if they really, came not in. for the yeah. whole okay. shift. Right. That's yeah. fair enough. And they plan their lives around their schedules. And yeah. Right. A lot of them have several yeah. part-time jobs, part -time right? Jobs. So it's not like they can just come in and yeah. do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, in re reality, in the bottom line, it doesn't really affect your budget number, does it? At all. No, it doesn't. Because it does. it's budgeted it's for. It's already budgeted. Yeah. Yeah. It's already budgeted, yeah. so it's not like you're adding to your budget. No. No. Not at all. And, just, they, and these people don't get holiday pay, so they... We figure this is like a small mm -hmm. gesture. Yeah. Um, and as Candace said, one to three days a year. This is really right. Good. I know. Yeah. yeah. It's not. We're not talking. <laughs> right. like, I just want to make sure that it's clear. And like again, if the maybe you look at the person that's requested a vacation day and they close, they still, you know, I don't know if that's fair or not fair, like to the employee or not. But um, that's what UMass does. It might be. <laughs> it might be interesting if, if, you know, if the personnel board would would take it up a little bit and think about this maybe on the next, not next schedule, but s somewhere soon. I would continue doing what you're doing now because it seems like that's what you've been doing since 2006, but um, 
I do, I would like the personnel to think about uh, personnel board, and I'm just looking back at you, Skip, but maybe, you know, I'd make a formal request to them to look at the policy and how that affects that. Talk with Barb and how that, you know, how the reporting and all, because whatever we decide, she has to deal with. And it, it um, you know, so it just needs to be kind of clear and concise and, and fair to people. So, um, I, don't know, I think we beat this one. Oh, do you have yeah. one more? A couple of things. Uh, the policy that Northfield, if I heard it correctly, sounds pretty reasonable. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that certainly is one you could look at. Uh, the situation where you've got somebody who's on vacation and you have a closure, that happens all the time, mm -hmm. particularly with, with full-time people. Get, take a week's vacation and wherever you're working closes for a part of the day, too bad. You get, you get 40 hours of vacation time. Hmm. Just the way I've always seen it work. Okay. Um, it's luck of the draw. It, it is so, it's so rare. It is. I don't think it's a, it's a real concern. Yep. But I would certainly agree it would make sense to have the town administrator during the normal hours, Monday through Friday, say, look, we've decided that we're going to close at noon and we're not going to open until 10 o'clock. On the weekends and, and in the afternoons, when there is no town administrator to make those decisions, somebody has to make the decision. And, yeah. and it seems like the department is a perfectly reasonable person to make that decision. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, and, um, and just to clarify also what makes our department different from a lot of other town departments is we're not just um, from five to eight, like two days a week we're open one to eight. So if we were to make a decision, you know, who makes that decision if, we're, if we go past the time but we're open before the town hall closes? And that's, we don't have any, the only day we have that, that doesn't happen is Saturday. So you know, it's because um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday we're open within the hours of the town. Yeah. But Monday and Thursday were open one to eight, so it just it makes it yeah. tricky, <clears throat> and I I don't know I just feel like it would be good to have a nice clean policy mm -hmm. that you know so um, employees aren't worried. Right. Yeah. You know what's yeah. happening. Here yeah. again, I go back to either the director or the trustees make that decision, not the town because and, it's yes, so, the trustees yeah. because they're elected. It's like us as a board of selectmen mm -hmm. saying, well, we think the schools should close today and call the schools and right. say they're closing. Right. What do you think the superintendent's going to say to us? Right. Not, right. not your issue. Yeah. I think the director knows best, yeah. but I she do. does always I consult do. with yeah. the trustees. That's, yeah. that's state law that gives the, uh, the superintendent that right. responsibility. I know. And I'm just saying is. that it's just... But, that's but the then again, he, the superintendent's under the elected school board. And not the town of Deerfield. But it's, yeah, so. but it's still. Well, it's you still could use the law. assessor's office for so, example. Skip, you've been involved with the schools long enough. When a board of selectmen tries to interject to school board, what happens? They ignore you. Yes. <laughs> not the board. They're perfectly blunt. So. And so. also, this um, brings us back to what for me was the bottom line the American Library Association. Mm -hmm. um, I, I assume it was someone. Um, it's a national you know, accrediting organization. Yeah. Um, someone in there uh, that knows something about um, legal right. um, situations said that Massachusetts law says that a governing board can make this policy. Mm -hmm. So if that's a Massachusetts law, that could be something that could put us in a position, a unique position. That's exactly right. I just so. wanted to clarify. It really, it's you know, I'm good with you making the decision. I just want to be fair to to because your town, you know, it's a little quasi thing. Your town employees and you know, I need to be fair to our other employees about the same kind of thing and have a overarching policy. And maybe it is split off a little different. For I don't, that. Yeah. It is what it is. But um, I just thought it's worth talking about mm -hmm. understanding and studying and, and getting yeah. some clarity for everybody. So okay. um, I think we'll just move. I would continue doing what you're doing. And then um, okay. because you have been doing it since 2006, and, it, and again, it's one or two, three times a year. But um, mm -hmm. we'll continue to kind of gather this up and talk with the personnel board. And Okay. Flush out something. From my recollection, you're sitting next to a very talented attorney. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I don't know that. <laughs> if, it, if this involved criminal offenses, <laughs> <laughs> yet, it seems criminal yet. that we're not paying. <laughs> it is criminal. But. 
Um, so, okay, so we'll, we'll just move on from that, yeah. I think. And okay. then the other item you have given us was a request to increase the hours of one library assistant for position yeah. at, uh, at Tilton Library. Um, yes. So do you want to speak to that a little bit? Uh, sure. So um, we had, well, we used to have three, but now there's two in this position that uh, work like Fridays and Saturdays. Mm -hmm. and, um, and part of the job description for anyone that's a, a library assistant, no matter what hours you work, is to be able to assist patrons with um, uh, questions about the computers that we have at the library mm -hmm. or simple technology questions. Yep. And um, we've been getting more and more, and it, it becomes like, it, it sometimes can become an issue because you're, you want to help this person, and then someone's wants you at the desk and the phone's ringing, and you know, it's not easy questions all the time. No, and sometimes it, t it requires some time. And mm -hmm. our staff, you know, is able to do it, but sometimes it, it can be a little tricky. And so, and a lot of people have said they wish that we did what some other libraries had done, and just to have like um, a drop-in technology, you know, assistance on a, on a, a regular basis. And so I talked about to the trustees about that, and there is one um, person who. Um, is this assistant for position mm -hmm. who is probably the most knowledgeable in that area. And so I thought it would be a, a good opportunity to um, expand the hours so that we can offer some uh, more um, time to this. And we already have schedule because I did take money from another fund that the library gets from state aid mm -hmm. um, from now until till, um, the end of June to for her to work these extra hours so that she can run this, um, not run a program, but she can yep. be the person that is the, the go-to person. The go-to person, yes. And so, but the and we would continue doing that. But the fund that we are pulling from is not a big fund, and we and what we really need it for is things that the library needs that are not covered in our municipal budget, and it could easily, you know, take away that money. And mm -hmm. so I'm looking to get the money from the municipal budget. So and and so I already submitted my budget, and this is these hours are in there, and I just want to. Um, to See, formally request it. Yeah, request that we increase these hours. So what will that bring this person's hours to? Will it make them a benefited employee? Or no. Will, okay. So no, it'll bring, let's see, she'll, 8.75 hours so far. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. An additional 8.5. Right. So about, about 17 hours. Yep. Yeah. I think it's a great program, and I'm so glad that you're thinking of ways to help our residents and mm. you write more and more things that, you know, I hear, I absolutely why, agree. why are people, you know, yes. why are we expanding a library? Everything's on a computer. Well, it's not all. And that's right. one of the services we typically do is, um, or you do, is to help people referencing information, yes. regardless of what form. And yes. uh, more and more of it, it's technology based. So. Um, and we're going to offer it um, on Tuesdays right now, but we also want to offer it at a different time because we think on Tuesdays, since we're open one to five, that it would largely serve um, maybe seniors, mm -hmm. um, people who don't work or work a different schedule, and then, maybe, um, and then gradually work into, especially if we get approved for this on a regular basis, to maybe have like a Saturday yeah. um, schedule as well, so that people that, um, that work you know, nine come. to five, they right. can come on a Saturday and get assistance. Sounds great. Well, I'm in support of that because yeah, I think too. I think being um, you know having some assistance is really important. I know I couldn't get along without my kids. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, and you gave us a breakdown of all the different salaries there, right? Yeah. So, so. the. The assistant four, which is the third one from the bottom. Oh yes, it just yep. shows so basically it'll be a, adding a Tuesday and a Wednesday. Yep. So it's about six to six hundred bucks or so. Okay. I think it's great. Um, one thing. Um, so, I think you're just notifying us. We don't need to vote on anything because we don't govern any of that. But um, one thing I wanted to talk to you about while I have you here is that, um, I'm, I'm not sure if Carolyn's mentioned this yet, but when we were in um, Boston for the MMA conference, we were pulled aside by, well, the, the rows of vendors 
One is the library, you know, grant money people. Mm -hmm. Right next to them is the um, community development. Community development, so senior housing, housing, that kind of stuff. And they kind of yanked this over because they, you know, they said, "Oh, you have a library coming up." I said, "Yes, we do." And, mm -hmm. Um, we said, you know, we're frustrated because, you know, this is a big expense for the town and we really want to utilize it in other ways and the space utilized in other ways, um, you know, just to add benefit to the, to the town. And um, again, the library is the focus point of the, uh, of the community and seeing the, the early surveys that came back from around town, uh, how much people really value the library and what they use it for and the cross-section of people that use it. And we have needs of senior center, senior housing, all these other things. And I think there's kind of a pilot program of working with the libraries and development of senior housing and senior center, senior center, and diff different kind of things we're like really that. Where we were kind excited. of handcuffed before, where we couldn't break down those barriers of being able to do both, like an expansion here and an expansion here, and could they be tied in together? So, I don't, know I don't <laughs> we don't know either, but I'm inviting you because they're going to come, this woman, Susan Connolly, I think her name is. Susan Connolly, yeah. Is going to come oh. um, Excuse me. out here either on the 13th or 14th, and we're trying to figure out a date, so I want to kind of group you in and see when you'd come, but um, just to listen. Of course, mm -hmm. nothing may change at all, and we may just not work for us, but... It may be exciting, so it might be great opportunities uh, for the town to kind of get moving on the issues that we want to get going. She was thinking either um, the 13th in the evening, um, like she said three or later, it's hard for me with work, it might be a little bit later than that, or uh, the 14th early in the morning, it's always hard for me too, but like 13th evening would be probably the best for me. But. Um, but I don't only have to be there, other people can take up the thing. I, I, um, looped in Diana and um, obviously Casey will let know because she'll be here at that time too so um, and I just wanted you guys involved in it as well just to listen and hear what she had to say mm -hmm. maybe it's something we decide this isn't going to work for us we don't want to mix it is there any but way she could share information ahead of time so we know I what this is I don't think so because oh. I think it's really it's uh, brand new it's new and I don't think they fully understand what they're going to do yet either. Well, they don't so, understand our request either. True. We, we, we wanted, we were looking for senior housing money. I mean, it's, who is it? it's an annual right. thing. And so, um, but we were frustrated that we were not able to get senior center money either. And I think that's what, where it all came from. Yeah, because so, I know our grant very specifically says we can't that's what we said to her. But and she but said, she said oh, that she can change. Changing. So, yeah. so she may have some information that none of us have. But she's and not with the MBLC. No, but she was standing right next to them and has uh, has been working with them on this specific issue. So This is a, a, a pilot to, from the governor, I think. If there's a way to cross-reference or merge grant money or find another way, it's worth listening to. Not that we would ever go that route, but it might be an exciting opportunity for us to kind of kill two cool, birds cool. with one stone and get some funding. We have um, an e-board meeting on the 13th at 6, but we could, how about 4? Mm, yeah, something like that. Do you think you could do 4 at, on the 13th? Just to listen, see what she has to say, and if not, you know, we'll move down the road. Um, Jeff, up to you. perfect. Yes, Trevor, could you uh, send out a notice to people, uh, whether email or whatever, or when that yes. meeting is going to take place? Of course. And if I'm hearing correctly, does this mean that there's a possibility of combining maybe, maybe uh, like that community room that they're talking about? as far as with use of senior center? Well, that's what, yeah, that's kind of what we said. We said, look, you know, we have needs, you know, the, scene, the, the library needs to expand. Um, very expensive for the town to do with everything we're doing, but there's value in this. Um, and I said, we also have these other needs. She pulled me aside and said, you know, you're doing a library. You know, there's, there's places where thinking we would do senior housing, like library here and senior housing above or on the same parcel. And I said, well, we have a, we have a parcel have right a parcel. next door, not on or under or, but right next door. And maybe there could be a bridge between the two. And because I thought it had to be like 
library only, nothing else touches it, because well, that's that what was, we've been that told. That's basically how it was described and she was, in, and in, she was, in the last couple of years. Exactly. But there have been several people that have mentioned that, why can we not piggyback exactly. two or three items instead of and do more of a complex for the same services at more expense. So Jeff, this is, this, this is this is this is so that's kind governor's of, pilot. Yeah, so that's what we said to, to them too. You know, we pushed back on all this stuff we've heard and they said, Well, we might have some exciting news that might help everybody out. I said, Well, we're certainly willing to listen, but you know, we'll just listen and see what she has to say and how it affects you know, us is, is there any benefit to us or are we just gonna leave it alone and just right. move on the way we're doing? But it's you know, if it helps if there's grant money involved and programs involved to get us a senior center or senior housing, you know, next to a library, what what better thing to you know, for the town to get both things moving that way. So it's worth listening to. Great to listen. So that's all I really wanted to do is just mention and listen and um, but I will send out a message as soon as I we solidify that date. If it could be at you know four on the thirteenth. But then. Jeff, you can't say come and say we're not spending taxpayer money. No, 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 no. We're trying no, to, to hustle money. Right. No, I I understand that, but I definitely you I have to smile. Prefer not to duplicate. Of course, and, and that's oh, no, exactly no, 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 right. No, 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 But you have to smile if you're going to come. <laughs> and you know, the library is We be have been paving the road oh, for this all weekend. We can so. tie on a <laughs> so well, you get funding to do the other one too. Are getting a little concerned. Right. Yeah. But Jeff, this is what we're trying to do. You hustle up yeah, and you I say know, you're gonna offer the town as a pilot if yeah. they give us X number of dollars well, to do the project. We will be a cooperative partner. It's, it's worth listening to. I know. Absolutely. That's all we really want to do is yeah. just listen and see what she has to say and then find out if it's beneficial to any of us, what concerns you might have. We talk to your grant mm -hmm. people. Is this something you're like, right. this lady's out to lunch. She doesn't know what she's talking about. You can't do that. But you know, but I think she was right next to them and had been if talking about together, this with yeah. them. So mm -hmm. if it if it works, great. Yeah. If not, mm -hmm. no harm, no foul. Okay. So. Well, we were. So we'll keep you in the loop on that. You know, we we've been trying to figure out different ways to get get these projects done, and uh, because when you add them up, it's just overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And um, but we want them, and we need, and I feel they're important to our community. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to be uh, an experiment. Mm -hmm. As long as they bring money to the table, we'll mm -hmm. we'll meet them. And we don't lose the other money. <laughs> right. Oh, yes, exactly. No, we won't jeopardize, you know, any of that. But if it sounded like she had some good news that we could leverage that somehow. So it's great to listen to. I mean, obviously, we're not the only community complaining that, you know, you're, you have the choice of the library and, and, and then everything else has to, you know, be duplicated somewhere else. I mean, that doesn't even make sense, especially in a small community. So... We'll see. Yeah, we'll see what they I, say. I mean, I was, I, was I felt, I, I, I was very excited. Yeah. Great. I mean, nice. this is how you get stuff done, yeah. Yeah. is you volunteer Leverage. to do mm -hmm. pilot stuff. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, um, if that's helped, do you want to go over Oh, I just else? wanted to, because um, I know that last year before budget discussions with the finance committee and mm -hmm. town meeting, um, I did need to get your vote to increase hours for the children's. Oh, okay. So, so you need a vote. So I, I do need a sure vote, yes. Um, <laughs> Back to the non fund stuff. And you've put it in your budget already. So, yes. yeah, I would I would um, support that. Um, yeah, I'll make the motion to support that. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Any comments from anybody? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. And you said you're having a meeting with the finance committee. Uh, we'll, we'll go to uh, whenever those meetings start for the budget. There is. He well, they've started. But they've already started. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So sh He's short, on the agenda. put it that way. Sometime in the next month. Okay. Okay. Yep. okay. Okay, good. Is this a position that you want to start right away? Well, we're already funding it from another source, so it will be, we're asking it to be funded from the municipal budget, um, fiscal year 21. Yeah. yeah. So I don't want to ask you a question since they're the ones that voted for it. Uh, where's the money coming from? Their budget. You've got to figure that out. That's not my department. Where's the money to fund all these new positions coming from? There isn't a new position. It's just more Same hours. position, just to more hours. So you guys got to figure that out. That's not my job. No, that is your job. <laughs> it is our job. We'll, we'll sort it out. 
And, and, That's and what you have meetings for, right? It was a meeting. Six hundred dollars should be the least of your concerns this year. Is, is, yeah. the <laughs> is the word rhetorical? Whatever you know, it's one yeah. of those kinds of questions that you know I did not expect an answer. We'll take it out of the hundred thousand dollars you're sitting on, and not doing anything with. <laughs> we yeah. may need it. You never know. It's still a half the hey, year's over. You know, I got to get one someplace. <laughs> <laughs> it's the finance committee slush fund. <laughs> you know what? I, I know, right? <laughs> it doesn't matter what. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, well, thank you so much for coming and staying late tonight. And I really appreciate you coming to the town meeting. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Participation and all you do for residents at the at the library. You as well. Uh, you know, it would be lovely to see you. Um, I know it's awful to be out in the winter, but, you know, maybe towards spring, early spring, you can come for just an update on what's oh, happening. Oh, yeah, we're yeah. planning on doing regular Okay. Good, updates. good. Good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Good. And that'd we'll, be great. we'll see you on, hopefully on the 13th. So I'll send oh, yeah. out an email yeah, once I solidify great. that yeah. for them. Yeah, I'm very curious. Great. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, next item, I just wanted to mention this quickly. Um, because this is really cool. Um, Jonathan uh, Boshe, who does our FCOT, FCAT filming, he does all of our wonderful things. And there he is. Come on out, Jonathan. I, um, I'm really excited because um, he just received the Massachusetts Creator Award uh, from Mass Access. It's the 2019 event uh, documentary. And this was the documentary he made about the Memorial Day in Deerfield for 2019. So. Show us what you got, Jonathan. I'm really oh, excited. This is, the, uh, this is the award. He was the event winner. Um, and I'm really, really excited about this. So you do a great job with us every day. And, and I'm uh, sorry you wonderful. dropped it, that's Jonathan. Oh, well, yes. It did look prettier before I dropped it. Oh, is that right? I thought yeah. it just looked like that. Well, it's supposed you know, to one of stand those... up. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll have to get a stand for it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That is really cool. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah, so thank, thank you for all you're doing. you guys enjoyed it. They we do. I liked it also. Yeah. I, I enjoy yeah. all of the things but that you, you know create. What? You create you all so kinds much. of stuff. For taping it and then you, the amount of editing you put in to make it flow better, it's just really so, nice. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. You're so, welcome. Yeah. Cool yeah. yeah, I love watching all your stuff you, you create, so thank I'm glad you. you're getting recognized for it. Thank you, Good. Jonathan. Um, so let's see. So we have that done. We have to That's sign done. the MVP contract. Yes, because those all have to go out. So let's, um, let's just hit old business. Um, well, we still have the new business. Let's finish that. So we have the Municipal Vulnerability uh, Program grant contract and then also the sign the MVP consultant contract with Conservation Works, which is all the work that's done. Okay, so he'll... He didn't have that for me to print. Okay, so we'll do it another time. Okay, so this is the contract for the money that we just um, were approved. I'm signing, and then you certify. Oh, we certify in the back. Yep, that's here. fine. And then okay. it gets notarized by Barb. And then I've got a mail at Local Night tonight. So it will get there for sure. Okay. So can I entertain a motion to sign the um, authorization for her to sign? Yes. The MVP grant for, it was just approved tonight. So um, you're going to authorize. I think we all will sign, right? Yeah. There's enough room. This is the um, this is the the, grant, the, the grant contract for the grant that, that we, we just voted approved tonight. tonight. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah, we're, we're going to receive um, five hundred seventy-two thousand two hundred fifty dollars. We had a match of one hundred ninety-six eight ninety-five that we voted. For a total of seven eight seven sixty nine one forty five. This brings our total up to one million one hundred and eleven thousand one hundred and forty one dollars. So we've collected off the M MVP. Do we program. sign where yours or no? We just leave that one blank. I, it's hard. We, they have irregular. I signed this one that was blank. 
bill yes, passes, there'll be Carol regular stable funding for the MVP. Okay, if David the way it happens now is the governor just too. You can put sort of out. finds extra oh. money and, then and he you sign. No, puts you it out there, sign. and then there's a cycle. No, no, no. Oh. Oh. Yeah, and you have to spend it okay, so by the end of the fiscal year. You have to sign so that your usually a summer need to be the signatory round, for now. Or at least okay. when, you, when then, Casey comes, you can change We've had a June and August. We just want to send it right away. Two winter. Um, cycles. Okay, so that's all so I need to do. So it seems like there's that's one right. in the this summer after, right. I'll get this after in. the Can fiscal year this? closes or close yeah. to the okay. fiscal year closure. Yep. And then oh, do you need this one? after sometime in the winter, okay. after right. you know the fiscal year gets started. But you got to spend the money by the following end of the fiscal year. So you have half cycles too. So some, like our first grant um, was divided between fiscal 18 and fiscal 19. So we had 28,395 that was, we had to spend by June 30th. And then we had $18,930 that we had to spend by the following um, June. But it was given in the same grant <clears throat> cycle. So it's a little bit complicated, but, and that's why it's sort of hard to keep a running track of how much money we actually get from it. Because it seems like we're getting money every every couple months, but it's been, I mean, it's been wonderful. So well, when do you expect to execute the projects associated with this grant? This this um, all these projects have to be done by June thirtieth, but we are probably anticipating an extension. Uh, an extension on Keller Drive maybe by a month or so, depending on the weather. Yes. It will be done in the summer. Yes. Oh yeah, it will be done by the summer. We just might not, because of the 60-day bidding, okay. yeah. they might physically not be able to get it completely done. And if there's weather complications, whatever. I mean, if we have a hurricane in the middle of construction. Okay, so um, just going over old business, I, I was going to hit the, um, the request for the sewer abatement, which we looked at last week um, and heard from the residents of Rob's Way. Um, I've talked with um, Barbara and thought about this a bit, and um, I, my recommendation would be to grant them the abatement, utilizing as if they were in the house and utilizing last year's thing. I thought about, um, you know, you can't just do that all the time. I Just because I know who was in and out of that house, I know it was filled in, but as a policy going forward, and that was my hesitation, I didn't want to just create a policy right away. I wanted to think about it because what happens is, um, say that house, it, it only happens when somebody buys the house in the summer, right? If they buy it in the winter, it doesn't really matter. They're in there already, so you see their winter rates. But when they buy a house in the summertime, my fear is like, what if that house sat vacant for a year? you would have no winter readings to base on. So I think in any policy going forward, um, the problem with this case is that somebody purchased a home and they got hit with a sewer bill for the whole summer usage. And normally uh, on a summer usage, you only pay you know 125% of that uh, off your winter usage because we figured most of the stuff is outside and maybe it's a little more if you take a shower, you're dirty and sweaty and all that stuff anyway. So you use a little more in the summer anyways, but not a ton more. So the, so the abatement that every resident typically gets is you don't pay more than 125% of that it's capped. Winter, capped at winter usage. So, um, but if somebody purchases a house in the summertime, um, they have no winter reading you know, on their bill. I mean, we know because it's a residence what the winter reading is, but these people got hit with a full bill for watering the lawn and everything. So we felt it was fair to abate them. Uh, we know the past residents that moved out and moved in, so we know it wasn't vacant. So the plan is to, on this one, is to uh, abate them as if we do on anybody else's. We take last year's winter readings and apply it towards their bill and give them the abatement. But you can't do that in any case, every case because you don't know if that house has been vacant all winter long. So then you would abate against, say, they only had 5,000 usage. You know, they've only been in there for a short time, 
in the winter and then they left and so you're abating against a 5,000 gallon usage instead of what would normally be a 50,000 gallon usage or something like that. So I think going forward, you would really have to take into account the last five years and take an average of the last five year winter reading so that you were giving a fair... Actually, that's a good thought. You know what I mean? Because yeah. otherwise you, you could get caught where you're giving yeah. somebody a huge rebate that they truly don't deserve because right. the house is vacant and they only use maybe a short amount of that winter usage. So you really need to take into account the properties usage going back five years um, and take an average of that usage and give an abatement towards that number instead. So I think that's the policy. I think it would craft going forward. I know it's not it's very rare it happens, but it shouldn't we shouldn't like welcome somebody to Deerfield and whack them with a huge sewer bill just because they weren't there the summer, the winter before. Um, and when you uh, when you do something like that and you are afraid of this vacant period or something, you throw out the low and you throw out the high and take the average of the three. Yes, exactly. Just some that's the way some you get out of outlier. Right, because you don't want to, yeah, you don't want an outlier like that. So, um, so that's kind of what I would like, to, you know, to write up as a policy, and we accept later on. I'd like to just debate them because we know the usage that was there. So, I don't have um, the actual dollar amount. I have to do that with. Um, oh, actually, let me see. And to add to what you said, you may want to put an asterisk in your policy that if the house has been known to be vacant more than one winter, right. the board has the discretion to exactly. adjust yep. as necessary. As necessary, right, because you just, yeah, you've got to make sure it's fair. Yeah. Um, That's a good idea. Um, we have to actually vote the abatement amount. I. Yeah, and I just, I'd like to talk to Barb and get that actual amount. Um, I think I could figure it, but I wanted to make sure, um, last, let me just do some math here real quick. Um, so you have, um, two, five, three, eight, one. You would have the, you could use the May 1st, 2019 rate. Isn't that the 71, weird? yes, no, the 71. Oh, is that the winter one? I think so, right? No, that's the summer one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Cause see, this how is many the, years does this go back? One. The May May takes is your last past six months, so this is your winter, and see, and this goes up in the summer. Right. Winter, summer's high. Yep. Yep. I I just can't imagine. I mean, they went. It's a huge jump. You know, they're happy to get a irrigation system. I don't. I think they went nuts. Um, so that's, yeah, so I think, I think we can vote it the next meeting. When are we meeting in? I just want to make sure, run that by Barb and make sure I have the to number 12th. all set. February 12th. Yeah, February 12th. So we'll just do it you then and then they we'll write a check back. So that's yeah, good. I was just going to say. I, I spoke with her today on the phone and she was going to be here. Her daughter had danced tonight. So we just, I just said, you know, I think, you know, the rate I wanted to go, but I wanted to run it by all of you and then we'll, and yeah, then we'll, we we'll flush vote. it out over the next couple of meetings and get them, get them a rebate. But, um, that sounds correct. Okay. What you came up with, okay. but I think you should run it by Barbara because we have to vote exactly. the actual dollar. I do. Yeah. Um, um, so I would feel better if you just take it on that. You, I will. Could, you could call her and let her know that we're, we're yeah. going to vote it yep. the next two weeks. Yep. yep, I will. Or that we agreed. We just yes. didn't have the exact dollar verified. Okay. And then uh, two we can set a clear policy, we'll just vote it in as a non precedent setting mm -hmm. abatement. Yeah. So if somebody can't come back and wage it for them, not for us. I know. Right. I, I, yeah, I think that's how we should vote it, is non-precedent setting, yeah. and then set the policy. Yeah. Because I, I think, I think those, that's a good policy. 
Okay, so I mean, it's I'll very going to be very this week and get rare. that squared away. Get the right number. We'll vote on it next meeting. Okay, um, that's good. And then, um, so assistant town administrator hiring. Are we just in a holding pattern right now until yep. Casey comes and we can deal with that stuff? Um, did she, Dave? Did you forward the um, application? I did not. I was going to give one of you two a copy of the ones that we had so you could have brought them to the uh, oh okay mma and given that's them that's fine to her. we can get them up to her I think, um, um, yeah just we'll scan them or something i think i have some somewhere okay uh, we should they've got to be in the book she, right. she should start looking yeah i think diana gave them to us last meeting i i so know I, can forward yeah, them she on. Did. I have yeah. them here so I'll, okay we'll get them to her um there was the review and vote to accept uh, personnel board's recommendations are a great step in increases, but we don't have that. Yeah, they didn't meet they Monday. To yeah. Okay, so we'll deal with that again later. Um, when, so when were you going to? Oh, he's he's gone. Skip left. Yep. left. And then the next uh, item was to review FY21 budgets. I need to get some budgets to um, Brenda uh, tonight. She's probably gone, but by tomorrow, she wanted to have things ready for tomorrow's uh, finance committee meeting. Our budgets. I don't have all of them, but I, I think um, I have our select board staff salaries. And so we have FY20's budget is um, 230, 842. And that was based on our additional, you know, what we had voted at annual town meeting and what special town meeting gave us um, last time. And I think uh, I'm, I don't want to increase from that and I don't want to decrease from that because until Casey gets here and figures out what we want to pay for an assistant and that level flexible. of assistant yeah. yeah and then um you know we're adjusting what we're having people do for help and when we figure out um kevin's help at dpw maybe we use some of that money over there um or mm -hmm. in our department until we get that funded um i just want to have some time to flush that out with casey here and really lay out that I'm that department that. Yeah. and i don't want I to go up legitimate. at all but I don't does that really, make sense to you jeff i don't want to go We're, down at all that so, well, we would be just hold what we have until we know what we're going to have until we have hired someone yeah i, I really as an yeah. individual want to speak to yeah you. no, no, no but fine. you understand we'll, what we're talking about right i understand what you're yeah. talking about so i think i'm just gonna um we haven't been that. spending the money right it's just going no, back i understand what you're talking about I was I wanting just, to spend the money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really wanted to spend the money and get help I just in don't here. Want to speak for of course, I'm not asking you to. Yep, I don't want to do that. No, but I wanted so, you to see if it made mis sense. So I, um, I agree because we 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 need to be able to have some flexibility in who we hire. We and we want to talk about you know the assistant that's in there now, her duties as it relates to what we're taking off of that. If we're actually if Kevin does end up hiring. Um, admin there and how much work admin does there to alleviate that and what will that free up here and who then you know and I also want to make sure that Dick is supported with um, board of health. with board of health um, because you know he's been working a lot on um, stuff lately and I think if he had some um, admin support to be able to write us reports so we could see every month or every other week meeting you know what he's tackling what's coming up that kind of thing that would be really helpful uh for us at planning our board of health work um so we know you know on paper what's happening and it gives him support to write reports and that kind of stuff um so maybe that comes out of our office as well we we have been working for a waiting for a year to kind of juggle that office and get the help and we are still not there and um so my goals haven't changed since special town meeting where i asked for that money um, and I know, you know, Skip will make a, a, a point that, well, you had it in your budget and we're not going to use it. Well, we don't know that. You never, you can, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know when that person's going to get hired. I know that I want to have enough money to hire a very qualified person to do the assistant town administrator job. And then if um, we have nobody doing our minutes for the last couple months now, so way behind on that, um, the person who was doing it resigned because they've been very busy. Sunderland so we need that done you know I need to kind of lay out who's doing what when Casey gets here and lay out our plan going forward for priorities for that office and that's going to allow me to do that so that's that 
So that's that one, unless anyone else has anything to say on that. Um, the other items were, I think, are ex Oh, can I borrow your... Uh, Thank you for coming tonight, Matt. Glad to see you through that I don't know. The choice was 25% or 100% pay. Not a huge choice. Complain about something. I I sure hope we don't have any problems between now and when it gets built. Do what? I should. I, I hope nothing happens between now and when it gets yeah. built. With this kind of weather, we're, we're okay. Yeah. But spring's coming. I know. The birds just chirping quite a bit. They must oh think my it's gosh! Coming early. I know. I can't believe it. I have. I have daffodil bulbs. I have daffodils this high already. Mm -hmm. extensively was contracted services so I yep um, so do you want to uh, do you want to just go over that well at the top one on my list here is contracted services um, is there anything so a lot of this so we kept uh, so network maintenance you have at 12 so that didn't change at right. uh, 12500 right. yeah but IT. I thought we are doing other things so that you, that hasn't changed in price. So the network maintenance is our outsourced IT. We have um, we are working with uh, Northeast IT on our second phase of our project this year, which was to bring our emails off of GoDaddy and migrate them to Office, Office 365. 365. Yeah. Um, we're also um, working with the COG um, for about three and a half years. The COG's been talking about doing a regional IT program, and finally, um, through the Western Homeland Regional Security Council have gotten funding to put together a regional IT us. program. Mm -hmm. um, I went to the meeting yesterday. Um, I, I think one of the challenges is that two years ago, the town of Deerfield got a municipal IT grant to address many of the same cybersecurity issues right. that now they're addressing at the COG through the yeah. regional program. So you are ahead of that. Like Basically, right. you got $47,000 to do some kind of networking um, we network were, all your buildings together. We were, so yeah, we were going to, no, we were going to put um, the network. school and this town together, together. with a cable. We right. skipped gonna, that. Right, you were going to hardwire the buildings together. You skipped that and went down the road of cybersecurity yes. instead. Exactly. You did penetration testing. You did an extensive overhaul of your domain network and yep. server. We did all the backups. We did right. the archives. We did the firewall. We did the antivirus. We are, you know, we yes. have an amazing system now. So right. the next phase though is for our emails the GoDaddy system is not doing our HIPAA requirements right. properly and it's not doing our archiving properly so yep. we're trying to change over so we're working with the town hall and the police department um, to try to do that for March of this year we have the money in this year's budget is so that the, that's so different 12, than the 12 5 that's right so the, but it but it covered the 12 5 covers some of that because it's the monitoring it's the support right it's the firewall it's it's all of your IT support basically we yep. had uh, a reactive IT support situation right. before we did yes this one. yes we did so now we have a proactive so this pays for uh, you pay for hours per month. If you don't use the hours, they can accumulate, and you can good. use those that time for project as well. Okay, good. So we should be. We're using. We're right within the hours we thought we were going to be. So we did leave that. Okay. Um, the the contract includes the public works department, meaning a computers outside of town hall, and it also includes the senior center. That's the offsite backup, or no? No, the network okay. maintenance account also oh, okay. for off, I see. for backup. Um, IT support includes those two other okay. um, areas. The the senior center, we are recouping those costs through our indirect costs. Right. So we'll put that in our indirect cost formula. Yep. 
The avian offsite backup is just part of that. That's part of our backup. We've, yep. we've changed that system, so now that's we brought that price down. Okay. Basically, by by readjusting what we did. Um, copy or rental, copy or rental. Is way down. So the copy or rental in this budget, and when you get to the town hall, town, mm -hmm. ex, town office expense budget, you'll see them some changes in the copy or rental and the telephone budgets. Um, those are lower because those costs now just reflect the town hall, where before they reflected Police other departments, right. copiers, and services. Yep. So okay. now those departments have taken on those costs and they right. come out of these these areas. So. Okay. And consultants. Um, the consultants. So we put in the six thousand is just kind of a general. Um, that's if you need extra, you know, Chris Curtis. If you need yep. extra planning or zoning issues or whatever, um, then then I did put in. Um, we had, I put in thirty five hundred for an MVP. Um, we had two MVP contracts this year in this fiscal year. The way mm -hmm. the way the grants fell. Just so that's again why we put extra in the consultant line. Yep. Um, the Siemens contract, that's the actual amount that you are under contract for monitoring. Um, we, we reduced the King service file consolidation. Um, we haven't, we got a little ways this year with it. There's quite a bit to be done. Um, yeah, there is. I'm hopeful with Casey's return, um, Casey may have more information about the filing system because she may right. have been the creator or the I know. inventor it's been, of it. It's been so perhaps that would be a good time to reorganize. So I left some money in there, but yeah. I think you know, that should be adequate. Okay. Um, training and professional development, that's just, again, miscellaneous for boards, committees, mm -hmm. anybody. Yep. Um, you guys could be for any, you know. The solar um, landfill is way down as well. Would yep. So I brought that down significantly. We have gotten the contracts back from um, council, through our council mm -hmm. and through Nexamp's council. So we are rapidly moving through the solar negotiation process. So I'm hopeful in 2021 you will not need, you know, you only need a couple months of Beth services, and then that should be concluding, that project. Hmm. You shouldn't need to be taking that consultant through okay, good. FY21. All right. Um, What's broadband connection? So this is that's just our Comcast. So so our telephone costs it? went down because our Comcast went up because we went to Voice over IP for our telephone service. And so we eliminated Verizon. And it, it wouldn't be in another. It wouldn't be under you know town hall. So our town office expense has our telephone budget in it. It's a separate budget. But not a that not budget a Comcast? went down substantially because this budget went up. But why wouldn't we put it under town hall, and not? I'm just curious. Contracted services? Uh, yeah, well, why is it contracted because services it, it's versus? It's for everybody. It's for all of the town, not just town hall. Oh, it's all gotcha. town departments. Okay. It's all of our internet connection from wastewater treatment, public works, police, yep. fire, uh, not fire, um, but everybody that has internet. Okay. Um, website hosting, that's our website webpage. Yep. Uh, this is the GoDaddy. So we had budgeted, we were budgeting 1500 You will be paying more for Office 365. Right. Um, is that going to cover it? That's, that should cover it. That okay. covers your current amount of emails. You have 56 email subscriptions. It means if departments or board or committee members want to have more mm -hmm. emails, it will cost more. Right. Um, I've talked to all the department heads about that, but we feel the amount currently is adequate. Okay. Um, but it is something you know to note that uh, the subscription service will be much more uh, effective. Um, it'll it'll translate through all the device, everyone's devices. Right. It'll be a lot, a lot oh, more. Oh yeah, seamless. I have it at work. It's great. Yeah. The emergency uh, so notification, rave, of course, we, we brought that down from yep. we went from code red to rave, and that brought that down to twenty five hundred. Normando is our telephone folks, so we we do have them come periodically and reprogram our telephone system, which is pretty complicated and antiquated, but they're able to do it, and that's mm -hmm. you know we we just budget for them in case they need to come in for, to do that. Uh, Brenda put in the soft rate fees. Um, these are all. These all came from the assessors. These are the actual costs of these services. And the sewer that. utility billing is less. Yeah, that's it. They she takes that out of the enterprise, so she just redu reduces it out of the contracted services. Okay. And charges it to the sewer enterprise. And the assessors. Yeah, apps. that's their software, that's support that we pay But that for wouldn't their... be under the assessor's budget? No, Why? it's contracted Why? service because everybody can use it, the GIS oh, system, I gotcha. the assessor's okay, online good. system. Yep. Like, same with general code. Yeah, I'll code. pull it up. Like, anybody anybody pull it up. can yep. use it. Okay. So we just put it under. It's and like a code. subscription service. General yep. code is good. General um, code. And the same with the GIS. And, the um, and then weights and measures is our 
person we have. And we haven't been paying for FERCOG emergency communication system any longer, right? I think right? we were, but that went into maybe the police department budget, I, think it I feel did, like. Right, at some right. Point. it went yeah. to the police department, but yeah. we're hoping not to pay for it at all because yeah. it's right. switching over to the state police. So that will be a huge savings. Uh, weights and measures. So FCAT. And that's just because we get that money. It just goes through. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. our contracted amount. All right. And there's so nothing else you think bit. we need to you know, The only thing I, sure I, I think the consultant thing should go back up to 7,500 mm -hmm. from 6,000. I, I, I mean, it's not a lot of money, but. Uh, I, I just, yeah. I don't know when this S10 is going to pass, and so, you know, we have you to front. You want to have money ready for it. Um, right. We front. Um, Chris is wonderful to work with. Okay. I, I, I mean, I feel like he's a huge partner, and we get the money back. Yeah. And it's part of, a, you know, it's our contribution towards mm -hmm. the grant. So um, I feel like that should be. Okay. It's small money, but it gives us a little bit of flexibility. Right. A little bit more flexibility. Yep. I mean, okay. you, could, you, could, you could level fund. I mean, no. I did bring it down a tiny No, that's fine. You could yeah, it's okay. If you can bring it down a little, that's, that's good. I'm sorry, David, what? The, the planner for the um, uh, planning board that we hired, mm -hmm. where's that? That's, that's in planning board. That's in the, huh? planning, it's in the planning board budget. It is in their budget? Yes. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, 7,500. Okay. So yeah, Chris is, Chris is working under a contract with them for that, yeah. but it's in okay. a separate budget. So. so town office expense, this is, you just explained a lot, was the supplies? Um, so this came down a bit a little because bit. of some of the things I just said. And the annual reports, I think, you know, 3,500. We've been printing 350. That's about the good amount. We get rid of all the boxes. We have a few That was left. our bill was... Um, 3500 bucks or was yeah. our bill less than that or more it's, than well that? it was 5000 but we did it we've been doing it the last several years for 3500 okay. or less we all haven't right. been spending the five and the publishing is publishing just all the stuff all we your, do yep that's know, fine your ads yep and your yep and um and that's just like um so that's not any kind of thing that we want to do in this building this is just kind of supplies and publishing stuff, right? I well, think of I guess, like, chairs think, and all right. that. I mean, I think that's something for you to consider, yeah. Trevor, where you do, where that money lives. Yeah. Uh, it is unclear to me if it lives right now in I don't town know building expense. You don't, I don't ever see your town building expense budget. That's through right. public works. I know, and so, it kind of seems like, I I'm mean, I'm not it's, quite sure where. I think the furniture, I mean, if know. we're talking about buying chairs, which I think yeah. is we need to buy some chairs. We, we need to buy chairs, have, some, we have some, some better tables. Pretty after. And a, and a, right. just so I guess the question is, can we, because in your town office expense money this year, you have like five grand for supplies for well, town offices. That's for town offices, like all of the town right. offices. Well, I didn't and know if everybody buys paper with that budget. or what everybody buys for, you know, just tell me yeah. where the money is. I'll and use it. And then you have a select board and administrator expense budget, which has, you know, just miscellaneous, you know, other things. But I guess I'm, it's unclear to me whether this is supposed to be town building stuff or is this the select board's expense rate right here? No, because everybody uses this. I think so, right? Uh, the whole so town uses. it should be town, town building's town expense. So, or town office, right? One of the two. What's the difference? Well, I think this should be town office expense. I think town office expense and these supplies normally are for like files well, that's what that I wonder. kind of stuff, not yeah. furniture and stuff. So that's what I'm unclear about it too. Okay. I'm not sure so, where you're so it could either be here it or it in the I don't have the town building. What is the in your in your budget book though? Do you have the town building yeah. budget in your well, budget? Well, I don't know book? if it's Just in this one. I could go grab the be. other one. I don't know if, if Kevin um, had submitted it yet, but I don't be, think he has. It'd be so interesting it's to know right for the town hall, you know, what is in there and you know, I think it'd be good for you guys to to take a look at that. Yeah. So um so I'll I could talk to So we can check on that. But, yeah. Uh, so but if you want to if you want to put something in this for supplies and use this I think this, we need to put in at least 500 bucks for three chairs or 600 bucks for yeah three or more chairs. than that. yeah so i think because i wanted to group it with um i just wanted to make this looking a little more presentable yeah and, we and some gotten, ex i need some expense I mean, to do that yes and i know pat i know we've been talking about this but pat pat did write down all of your preferences we have the mass Good. core information right we got stuff to put um to redo this hallway like right. to get to redo the pamphlets yes. and stuff so just we have all of that basically um, picked out or, or, you know, we can, we can get it all together. Good. We just need to know where the money's coming from and, right. you know, 
get mm -hmm. your buy-in on just well, I'd like actually place in the order. Then why don't you put it on the next agenda? <laughs> to put it on the next agenda? Yeah, Fantastic. to just so, so let us where look that's going to be. Okay, yep. perfect. I mean, okay. I'd like to see what people have chosen. Right. Yeah. Here. Well, yep. it's just the stuff that I think Trevor sent the mask. Did you send the mask order? These, these I don't think they've too? seen it. Okay, no. all right. I'll so send they, the catalog. Yeah, that'll be great. All right, so then uh, select board and administrator expense. This is um, your meetings. Um, I just wonder, does that cover enough for MMA? I don't, I don't know what we, I don't, uh, I'd have to go look at the bills. Whenever I get the printout, it's not broken out by I think it's item. enough. So uh, I just want to make sure it covers MMA and anything else we do. Um, the trainings with um, our attorney, I wanted to make sure that's, those are supposed to be you're in this year's to be budget quarterly meetings and i think you're supposed to get at least an annual training that's included in your hasn't happened. in your flat rate right so we need to work on that but um postage uh is that and that seems to be enough for our mm -hmm. yeah because that's just for yours and then we bill you know every every department's billed for their postage i mean you can see the last several okay. years you haven't even spent close to the right amounts that yeah yeah. Okay, good. That's fine. Leave that alone. Um, the senior center expense, we've dealt with that. Um, yeah, this, that was just stuff I was working on. Yeah, this is not really. I, that wasn't your stuff. We're going to sign that, and I think we have a meeting on the 3rd at the, at the booty, straighten that out, so we'll leave that alone. Um, this is contracted services again, we've already looked at. General insurance, they've already, I think, yeah, done that already, that. right? I'm pretty sure that's all done. So really, um, it's our select board salaries, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else under, let me just look at one here. Select board salaries, we're staying, there's been talk about a five member board, and that, that, I don't think we need to budget for that. If that ever happened, we would, no, you have, to, you have to go through town. Yeah, you've yeah. got, to, you've That's got not several be in channels this, or no. several uh, processes you have to go through before you... Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, so that's not going to be happening here. Um, this is good. Finance committee, accountant salary. Now, I wanted to... Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about, because I, I, personnel board was going to be looking at that salary and grading it, and I just want to make sure that what's in there for the accountant salary is um, adequate Adequate, in, and with a little bit of room to adjust in case they decide that it can be, you know, um, adjusted. She's taking on all the budget stuff, and we keep saying we're going to compensate her for that, and it hasn't happened. So. I wanted to make sure that we looked at that. Um, so that they're supposed to, they're one supposed thing to you you may want to consider just as you start to think about these salary changes because not it's not just the town accountant. You have um, several things in front of the personnel board that you've asked them right. to look at, and they are just in general sort of looking at some of the jobs and mm -hmm. the class and yes. comp plan. Um, so maybe for next year's budget, you have an allotment somewhere that's just. Uh, salary adjustment. Yeah, salary adjustment line. Yeah. Right. So that way anybody. Um, I can move it where we need to move yeah, it. That may... I, I get nervous about when you start putting in one budget or another budget. You know what I mean? It would be better mm -hmm. if you. I know. I just wanted to make sure that we, you know, yeah. this didn't get just voted thought. by everybody and then it's, you know, oh, we didn't think about it in time. Right. We have been it's thinking about it. It's a great idea it. to think about having yeah. something in there for salary adjustments. Mm -hmm. Just figure out where you want to put that and then you can move it into the right places. Okay, so I think I think I'll probably have enough to talk to her about. I don't, you know, legal. We're gonna talk about that with them, and is this working for us? We think we should have a conversation about that a bit. Um, yeah, we, Casey will follow up. Yeah, she already knows that's a priority. Yep. She wants us to have a um, want us to talk about some priorities. Yes, right. We'll move on. Dave, so. All right. Um, um, yeah. So I, I did um, <clears throat> just in, in light of that, whether it's my own stuff, but I put together a case for an omnibus list of what I have as 
your projects and ongoing significant activities? We, we can only have six. <laughs> she wants you to have six. <laughs> Top so, six. Break yep. it down, people. Um, this is, I also, in uh, beginning of my 20, have given you a list of proposed priorities, yep. which is not even on this list, that list, because these are all administrative initiatives. Mm -hmm. These are not projects. Right. What you're looking at right now in front of you is only projects, right. mostly. There might be one or two administrative initiatives, but mostly they're projects or grants that are in current. Well, so. it's, it's alphabetically it's the last one, but to me the number one project that we have to mm -hmm. um, yeah. is the wastewater treatment upgrade. That's yeah. the most money and the most. I numbered them because I thought what maybe you would want to do is each of you, um, you know, give give it some thought in terms of putting them in a numeric order and then maybe coming back together and you know building consensus around that. But whatever you know however you want to approach it but that's what i did i did number them just so then you could say oh i want number 24 to mm -hmm. be number one and i want number 17 to be number two or whatever how many projects are on this 24 24 right at the moment they range in cost from what to what oh no, no 19 cost. million to who knows what i do have a lot of costs i'm working on a workbook too chris which hopefully Get more, a lot more information into. Um, I I can I can address my five and and if that will help, just I I felt. I'll just put a C next to yours. Go ahead. Yeah, I felt that the sewer had to be number one yep. because uh, financially it had the most tremendous impact on us as a okay. town. And, and then my next five were, um, you know. Uh, we're all sort of the same. Um, I mean, well, the MVP pro program right now okay. is, is we're bringing in yep. hundreds of thousands of dollars, so we need to continue with that. Yeah, so that, that would have been my number two, I guess. Okay. Um, and then senior center, senior housing, um, complete streets, the common, and the so senior center is not on here lot. or is you know well i don't working well group. i had put senior i just added that senior housing based on the email you yes. sent trevor i didn't yep. realize you're talking about senior center in that as well but uh but how but one of the things is that um one of the town initiatives is the town building mm -hmm. initiative and i have that on there town building right. advisory yep basically that's an encompasses that building okay stuff so you have senior housing then what else do you have Senior is senior center, senior housing, and the, and the uh, complete streets, the common, mm -hmm. um, and then small projects, which the two small projects that I think is really important is the we have to finish the hazardous mitigation plan if we're going to access mm -hmm. any money, right? And um, the culvert assessment um, grant we need to get. So Which that we're in here, line, right? right. So we're in line for um, shovel ready projects. That's the DTLA. And then, um, you know, working with Greenfield on um, our uh, health department, um, health department issues. Um, you know, sort of, I don't want to say mergering, but more cooperation, especially with the Cornell, uh, you know, the, uh, all the different things that are happening from a health point of view, like the, you know, the ch virus outbreak. Okay. So those are yours. Do you, do you want to just, you want to get back to us, Dave? Or do well, you wanna, yeah. Do you want to um, you know, take your time, but we don't have to do this right you know, now. To me, I, I know the wastewater treatment is mm -hmm. very high. Yep. Well, my number one is staffing for our office. Yeah, I've got that right here. So Actually, yeah. Yeah, staffing. yeah, that's that's, a, that's, that's the priority it's for. Number one. <laughs> yeah, it's that's the priority one. for. You can't, you can't do that's anything. That's the priority for Casey, yeah. not us. She right. wants us, us our priority. No, but that's but my. Agree. It's mine and hers. Yeah, I think that's a good number one. Because you can't do anything without it. Yeah. I've been waiting right. years. I know, I know. So I agree. Then I will. Okay. Back up and say that I agree that that is the okay. number one thing because I already told her that was her number one yep. job when she came right. was to start that process. Yeah. 
Okay. I mean, look, this is the, just so you understand, too. I mean, and, and not that you guys have talked a lot about these things, but, you know, these are the administrative things that really need to also be looked at. So mm -hmm. the project stuff, you know, some of it you can't leave behind because of grant funds, but you may want to consider setting aside some of your projects. Some of your staffing is your number one. But you have a lot of also, you know, administrative things like policy issues and oh, things I've that, you've, ton. that you have I mean, to like, deal with. I've, the list um, is like 50 long. So that's no. why, I mean, some of these things that I have on there that I put on last year, you are dealing with through your grants and through mm -hmm. your other projects. But some of these things by getting getting periodic meetings with these people, you know, working with all the, we've talked about having more an organized approach to, you know, working with the nonprofits and things like that, having, um, you know, more regular meetings with um, with all of the different agencies and things like that. And then one thing that's come up the last couple of years repeated, or not repeatedly, but a couple of times is the IMAs, you know, just looking at mm -hmm. our intermunicipal agreements on our shared services with the SCEMS and the Senior Center. Yeah. Um, this year we're looking at the indirect costs and reviewing that, but your IMAs are very loose and they are not, haven't really been looked at since you formed the services and now are actively you know, in operation. So you really should go back and look at them. Um, every time we try to look at the senior center, the this the the, the IMA, it, it's not really useful in helping us identify some of the um, you know things we're trying to figure out as far as operations and. Um, so Dave, what else did you have besides staff? Because well, I agree with that. I had, I had already said that to the, her. Um, you know, I'm just kind of looking at things maybe a little differently, is that, you know, like the solar project, that's a potential of $300,000 a year. We've got to push that along. Absolutely. Um, I agree. Economic development, you know, um, making sure, I don't know how the survey's coming on that, if that's all been done yet or any reports on I've that. I've got to touch base with Kevin. Because we want to get the Speaking of which, RFP um, or I, I was FQ just going to say, how, how is the, has the RFP, can we get the RFP out yet? Well, I, think I have to figure out what's going on with the survey. I'll check with Kevin. Last I knew, Kevin and Mark were, you know, working on the survey. So it should be I know, but being done. we got to make phone calls to make sure it happens. Yeah, because that's... We I should get have checked out. with Kevin today. I should no. have asked him. I'll follow up with him tomorrow. My yeah, understanding is there's several people interested in that property, so... Well, they need to get their... They, they're interested because they want to start building. Yeah. And if we miss the building season, that will change the... Their desire, and yep. we're carrying the loan. We should be turning the loan over yep. into tax money. You know the. Uh, you I mean, you'll find too. Uh, there are several items on this list that are also relative to what Kevin is working on too. So, Kevin's been also <coughs> pretty busy. Because you know, then you know. It's going to be in the top five is, um, between the senior housing and the South County Senior Center. Mm -hmm. Yep, I've got that here too. Yep, that's one of my top fives as well. So we could you we know, could the paving at the bottom of Sugar. You know, that's an ever source. That'll thing. happen. That'll that's, happen. That's ever source. That's yep. not us. Right. We've pushed that along because it's. Yeah. Everybody wants it, and we've you know, and finally and we're getting it there. Because, you know, yep. you go by there, and sometimes you could lose your car. Thinking, okay, somebody <laughs> you could lose your car or go they fish. They don't have Subarus, they're not going to get out of there. Yeah. They could stock the pond, I think. So, um, <laughs> it's, it's interesting some days, especially with that heavy rain. Well, and we take, and we use staff time to take the complaints. Yeah. So it is good to push it along. Um, okay, good. So, all right. Well, we'll we'll hash this out and vote on that next meeting. Mm -hmm. She starts. Perfect. When uh, when's our next meeting? The twelfth. Mm -hmm. Perfect. She'll be here. Um, we can get started on that and give her some clear direction. And if you have anything um, that you want to, you want to email Diana ahead of time and just so we can send her something on. That's fine as well. I don't. Mm -hmm. We'll solidify. And I, really, I need to sit with her and talk about a lot of stuff and with all but of us I, I together think, just yeah, kind but of I think there is consensus that, that there is this the staff needs to get done it's number one 
Yeah, number. and then uh, and then the sewer just because of the huge financial mm -hmm. impact. Mm -hmm. But then everybody else is sort of we're all in the, sort of on the same page. Yep. We want things to happen, and I I think um, Dave, you are correct. A lot of this stuff can be wrapped up. You know, like the landfill stuff. It has been going along, so let's try to finish you know, it up. It's, you know, I look at the, the solar project as we've been trying to get solar on there. Huh? We've been trying to get solar on there. Yeah, it's for a long time. For a long time. But it's one of those things that it's bringing in a significant amount of money, and finding out legally if we can actually have to put that in the general fund or if we can set up something else to designate those funds for something specific. You could do, you mean OPEB? like capital? <laughs> huh? Like uh, capital? OPEB? That, that would be a good... Par partially, you know, OPEB, but, you know, some of for the capital. Mm -hmm. um, looking at, you know, you know, look at this place. Yes. I mean, you know, we have this, we have the church, and we have yeah. The senior center right here in this corner, and all three are. It's okay. time for yeah. a grand plan. Bad, worse, and terrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, it's, uh, you know, this building here, you can't even do anything to it without the thing collapsing because of the way it was constructed. Yep. Okay. Because Do you need that back? Um, well, we how about we get copy? a photocopy of it? Okay. Because I think it's good to have it. All right. Summary. Because you, you uh, forget all these things. So I think we're we're good there. Uh, so I think we're we're uh, all set to adjourn, right? Uh -huh. It's been a long night. So thank you, everybody in TV land, and I really appreciate everybody coming out tonight and supporting our um, special town meeting and listening to the. Um, complete streets prioritization plan so we'll get all that stuff kind of moving along um yeah thank you chris so, motion to adjourn thank you. It's a long day. <laughs> well it's exciting to can i get a second, <laughs> second. <laughs> all those in favor aye. aye thank you jonathan do you want this